And a very good evening to you. It's Wednesday, the 1st of April, 2015. A warm welcome along to today's United Kingdom talk. And you may have seen that little boy at the beginning. I say little boy. The boy at the uh, beginning of the uh, video there. That is indeed my nephew. And he is today 18 years old. I'm not sure if he's with us tonight. But if... There goes the cuckoo. The 11 o'clock cuckoo. Um, my mate noticed... The little cuckoo, the cuckoo clock that's behind me, the cuckoo doesn't actually come out of the door. I mean, the door suddenly flaps open, dear. It flaps open for all the world to peer inside. Wouldn't it be wonderful to have a little little hole like that, right, where the flaps suddenly come open and something pokes its head out and it starts singing at you? How fabulous would that be to the human body? But no, it's restricted to cuckoo clocks. The only thing is, my cuckoo doesn't actually come out. I can't remember if he, if he or she, I don't know if it's a he or a she, if he or she ever actually came out of the hole. Is it just the door that opens and the bird that's... I'm not quite sure. I'm really not sure. Anyway, happy 18th birthday to my nephew, uh, Jimmy, uh, today, just in case he's watching. Isn't it fantastic? And you've only got an hour left. You're only ever 18 once, Jimmy. Only 18. It happened to me a few years ago. Yes, that is correct. Yes. Yes. Just just, just a little little while ago, you know. A uh, few people with us already this morning. Good morning to Marge. Marge has been trying to help me uh, tonight because... Uh, as you know, one of the ways you can contact the show is through Skype. Our Skype username is United Kingdom Talk, OK? United Kingdom Talk is the Skype username. If you've uh, not got us on there, then feel free to, to click the ad thing and I'll add you in there. Um, but she says it's reading the wrong time. I think to her it's reading midnight. Now, it is here in the UK, uh, just coming up to four minutes past 11 o'clock at night. Uh, this week, our hour moved forward an hour. OK, so I'm not quite sure why that's happening. I don't know how to set the time. What I've done, um, you, you, you kind of get options. Hang on, I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. Maybe someone knows. Often you say these things and someone knows. Right, hang on. Save, show full. For, there it is. OK, so in the in the profile thing, right, if you've got Skype, you know where your my main Skype window is, yeah? Um and you've got the list of people underneath who may or may not be on, right? You click your little profile photograph, and this, this profile thing comes up, right? And if you just scroll down there, your come to city, right? Which I've got as Bracknell. So, the, the, oh, there's a state, state as well. Would you try to do that as well? Hang on. Bracknell is my state as well, is it? I don't know. State province. No, that would be Berkshire, wouldn't it? Bark. Shire. There we are. Berkshire. OK, then it says City Bracknell and then it says time. And my time says 2304 GMT plus one. Because that's what we're in at the moment. Or I can set it to my computer's time. So actually, I, I will now set it to my computer's time and see if that makes any difference. Um, it was set to that actually before Marge. Or maybe, I, I don't see a, like a save button on here either. Does anyone know anything about that? Can you see my time on your Skype? Because I don't, although I've got a list of people up here in front of me, I can't see any times. The only time I can see a time is when someone sends me a message. And that is like, for example, Marge, you're sending me messages. But the time coming up is the time here. Like it says, the last message you sent was at 2,300 hours. So I don't know. How, how does that work? Thank you, Marge, for your uh, kind help today. Uh, Millie's with us today. Millie, uh, Marge is in Oklahoma, USA. Millie is in Minnesota, USA. And Millie says she hates the warm-up music. Can we have some proper songs? Unfortunately not, uh, Millie, because that's all, that's all a copyright issue thing. And YouTube won't allow me to play normal music i say normal music uh pop copyright music stuff that's why that music is carefully selected so as not to upset anyone oh you can't oh you're using my music oh don't use my music oh no i want some money for that oh do as a favor i'm not getting paid for this so i don't see why you should do you know why should you get paid for it so that's 
<laughs> so that's the reason for that, Millie. OK, so it's no one starts complaining. Oh, I, I want some money. You played my music. Oh, well, I'm, I'm playing my talk. Why are you watching my talk show? If you are a composer of that piece of music that I asked, right, and you're moaning about not having your money, you're, you're watching me now. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll charge you the same as you charge for two hours. Two hours. If, if we get, we might not get to two hours. No one might call in. We might not get any calls. It might all over be over in five minutes' time tonight. I don't know. Depends how I feel. Depends how I might all finish in two hours, in two hours or five minutes. But if you are the composer, you know, and for three minutes I might have played a bit of your music there, bear in mind I'm giving you something back for two hours and I'm not charging you a penny. So be bloody grateful for that. I'm in cheek. Um, Millie says, I can see the time. It says 11.06 p.m. Right, well, that is the correct. You can see my time, can you? 11.06 p.m. OK, Millie. Uh, Marge, I think it's you. Because Millie can see the um, time. It must be something to do with, with your end, darling. All right? Don't know what. I, I can't answer the question. OK, I'm afraid. Uh, Marge does indeed like the startup music. Thank you very much, Marge. Shania's with us today. Hello, Shania. You're up late today. No school tomorrow again. God's sake, she's been playing the violin at various concerts all over the wonderful place called the Isley Widget. Isley Widget. I-S-L-E-O-F-W-I-G-H-T. Isley Widget, which is just off the uh, British... Uh, British Southern Coast. It is part of the UK. It's like a little island. Uh, it's a nice little place. Uh, Brandon's with us this evening. Good evening, Brandon. Maybe we'll get another call from you later if we can keep it clean and stop mentioning the word knickers every five minutes. Brandon at the moment is obsessed by knickers. Yes, I don't know if he actually wears them or anything like that. I mean, you know, each and every one's themselves. I think there's been occasions in the past I might have tried on my sister's clothes, you know, many, many years ago. I think that's where it all went wrong, really. All right, as the case may be, you know. Perhaps that's the thing to do now. I mean, look at that, um, what was that, cage fighter, Alex Reed. He used to wear his wife's clothes, didn't he? You know, each and every one to their own. Uh, Anne's with us today. Hello, Anne in Lewisham, who says she loves the countdown and the music. She loved the music. It's only you, Millie. You miserable old cow. What's wrong with my music? Cheek. Anne likes the music. She loves the countdown and the music. Um, loving your shirt uh, suit you better than the T-shirts. Yeah, I try and make a little bit more of an effort at night time. I don't know why. I feel I need to make more of an effort at night time. So, indeed, I have done. OK. Now, we've got a call. Rory is on the line. Good morning. Oh, good evening. Good you know, it's not really, it's, it's night, isn't it, Rory? It's not evening. Yes, it's 23.09, according to my clock. 23.09, that's right. Yes. Hello, Rory, how is Fulham tonight? Fulham is OK, Fulham is OK, yes. And you caught me off guard with that April Fool's joke this morning. <laughs> <laughs> do, you know, do you know, do uh, you those, know, those that don't know, I do do short videos as well. And in this morning's short video, I told everyone that I had got a job at the BBC, in, in fact, on BBC Radio 2. Yep. Uh, and I told this thing, and then I, I talked about another couple of things, and right at the end of the show, I said, not really, it's an April Fool, got you all. But uh, I got quite a few messages came in, and it just shows you, it proves the point that people don't watch the whole show, Rory, because they wrote in and congratulated me, uh, at which point I wrote, watch the whole show. And then right. it was like... <laughs> <laughs> That's very clever. <laughs> I did that to my dad once. My dad loves Weetabix. Yes. So I, I, I told my mum to empty out the entire Weetabix box and put a note saying, kill Rory was here. <laughs> what, and in, in the Weetabix? In, in the Weetabix box. That was when I was about 12. <laughs> and my, I, my dad thundered up the stairs going, could I have some Weetabix, Mr. <laughs> Dyer, please? Do you still eat those? I do, actually. Do I was, um, I, um, my, my helper, Raoul, who's, who um, he was one of my other helpers. Brenda's the other one you might, you might remember. Um, but so, uh, just, just tell us a, bit, a little bit about yourself, um... Uh, in case there's people that don't know you, Rory, what, what, why have you got a helper? Is that, do you want to tell us that? Or you don't have to if you don't no, want okay. to. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a wheelchair user and I have um, b b various support needs. And basically, Ra Raoul and Brenda and Co just help, 
Just help me out, lady. Right, and, uh, and 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 the reason the, the reason for the Weetabix this morning was I thought Rowan bought me some Weetabix, and he actually bought me some Weetos. Oh, wheat! Are those those little round things, all different colours? Yes, yes, yes. Oh no, they're Cheerios, aren't they? Well, I, well, I wanted to get some Cheerios, and he bought me some Weetos. Oh right, is there a difference? Don't think so. Don't think so. Weetos. Yes. Tell me what they are. Oh, tell me what they are. Weetos. Well, I only had them once or twice. They're sort of whole wheat hoops with chocolate on them, basically. Oh, you're making a mistake with the chocolate, you see. Here we are, yeah. Weetos. Let me have a quick look at that. Made for, oh, no, wait, no, it's not all bad. Made from whole grain wheat. No, it's not all bad. So no, they no, sell, no. They, do they sell it as like a, a healthy product and then they cover it in chocolate? Well, absolutely. <laughs> I think that's a decoy, isn't it, really, to be honest? Yeah, um, round... Round Weetabix type things covered in chocolate. Yeah, I've got that now. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I don't think I've seen those. Not, not for years. Not for years. It was just pure, purely accident. Accident that Raoul got them this morning. I was um, talking about eBay because you were asking about eBay, weren't you? Yeah. One of the things I wanted to talk about. I've got a little list of subjects today. I'm a bit more prepared today, um, uh, Rory. I'm mm. a little bit more prepared. Look, it's not even just written down in a book. It's all typed out. Oh yes, dear. Oh. Hours of hours of rehearsals are spent here. I've rehearsed the entire show five times today. You know, <coughs> pretending to be callers myself. You know, such as okay, we're going to take a call. Let's speak to Mark. Hello, Mark. Oh, hello, Chris. And how are you today, Mark? Oh, I'm very well, Chris. What would you like to talk about? Well, I built something off eBay, and I must say it arrived all broken. So I do rehearse the shows myself. I've been up since one o'clock in the morning last yes. night rehearsing this. Yes, I could pretend to be another, another caller. Oh, hello, Christopher. This is Janet from eBay here, you know. <laughs> That's something. <laughs> oh, Brandon Oops. says, Weetos are the chocolate ring cereal. He says, they're very naughty. I do like a bowl of Cocoa Pops. Yeah, Cocoa Pops are very Cocoa traditional. Cocoa Pops. Yes. yes, he said, for a while, I am lady, it's normal to wear knickers. Nothing wrong with all the music. The countdown is real good. Oh, so he likes it as well there. Uh, I've just, as your messages come in, I, yeah. I, I kind of try and concentrate on Rory first, and then I come to your messages after, my darlings, all right? Carry on, Rory. Tell me about your eBay experience. What did you buy then? Well, I, hadn't had, I haven't had very many, but I've heard a story where a guy was selling something on eBay and said, if you want to see what's inside this bag, pay me five pounds. Oh. So, and somebody paid him five pounds to discover that there was a potato inside the bag. And uh, <laughs> what's? I mean, why would you do that? Silly, isn't it? And well, while on that subject, actually, my, my my wheelchair, which is called a rascal, quite appropriate for me to, to be honest, uh, <laughs> that was bought on eBay by, by my dad. A rascal. Oh, so you dad, so you got your wheelchair off eBay? Yep. May I ask how much that was? Uh, it's, uh, it was uh, it was an electric second-hand wheel drive sitting in it at the moment. Yes, and it's it's the one you saw at the cherry tree two weeks ago. Yes, yes, and it it is it was about three hundred pounds. And that's on eBay. Yes. How much are they new? Don't know. Oh, okay. Oh, I uh, would have looked that up first. You can end up paying more. Mm. You could have paid more because that happens. You know, if you're not careful on eBay, you know when you're bidding. And like someone else is bidding, and you think, well, they're not going to get it, and you keep. You can actually end up paying more than if you'd have gone and ordered it off uh, Amazon with one-click ordering or something like that. You know, you've got to be very careful with that. But has how long have you had the wheelchair now? Oh, quite some time. It was. Um, it's it's quite reliable. I've just got some new batteries for it. Actually, I was going to think... say, how long did the batteries last? Yeah, it's. A, uh, I think they last quite a while, but they do. They do. Re they do require regular charging. Um, I think the ones that they, the the, the, the new the newer ones, cost about a uh, thousand pounds or perhaps more than that. So what? we got oh, a rather good deal Sorry. deal on this one. What about the batteries? How much are they? Oh, I can't remember. Uh, I think it's something like uh, thirty pounds or something. I don't recall offhand, or maybe a bit more than that. I don't and know. they last a year, two years, five years. What? Probably, probably about five if you're talking regular oh, okay. charging. So quite, quite a considerable amount of time then. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And the other interesting thing was you, you, you were talking about moving house. I, I've only moved house uh, twice really because I used to live with live with, with mum and dad. Yes. And then after art college, I moved here to the Broadway to Fulham Broadway, 
Uh, but um, I'll tell you what's strange, though, Chris. When, when, when my friends moved away from the area, because I was brought up here, and it's really strange actually going to their old houses mm. and knowing that they've all moved on. They've all gone, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I drive around my old uh, childhood house, which is in Roehampton. Yeah. And then I go around, you know, to get there, I might go past so-and-so's house. and Oh, I wonder who's there now. Or indeed, I wonder if they are still there. You know, because you yeah. lose contact with all these people. I yeah. think I lost, lost contact with practically everyone in Roehampton. I mean, everyone. Where really? I grew up, and I knew so many people there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, perhaps on CB radio, or, you know, going mm -hmm. out down the pub, or going on our bikes through the scouts the school, so many people. I do, I, I'm not in contact with any of them. Um, the, yeah. I'm trying to think. I, 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 I love CB. I love CB radio. Like, I'll come about the houses in, in, in a second. But I remember when my dad had a CB radio in the car, and I, and I was very little, you see, and my dad's handle was the organiser. Yes. So me and Marcus, my brother, made up some really weird handles. I was Coco Pop Monkey, <laughs> and, <laughs> of all things. And, and Marcus was Honey Monster. <laughs> oh, give me the honey, mummy. <laughs> yes, I want my honey, yes. Do you eat those? Honey oh, Monsters? Oh, yes, yes. They, they've actually decreased the sugar on them. Oh, right, yeah, well, uh, yeah. I think they had to. They were cakes, yeah. them and Frosties, they're the worst things. I did go for a period of time, uh, right through the winter, yeah. uh, sometime, where I, I loved porridge. And for some strange reason, the last few weeks, I've completely gone off it. And the, the yeah. porridge I have is the um, it's 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 the easy one. I'm afraid, you know, you tear a tear a little tear a bag open, yeah. you put it in the bowl, put you, you measure the milk in the um, uh, I use soya milk uh, or co co no cocoa, what's that? What's going on up there? Cocoa dairy free milk I use. Yeah. Um, and uh, you measure that, put it in, and then stick it in the microwave for three minutes. But for, and I like the golden syrup one, but oh, for yes. some reason I've gone completely off it. I don't know why. I just have, and I've gone back to having uh, bran flakes now. Bran flakes with blueberries, uh, a little bit of that cocoa dairy-free milk, and I smother it in honey. I oh, so you wouldn't mind if, go if Goldilocks ate your porridge then, would you? Yeah, but you have to do it in the right way. You put the milk on first, right? Not too yeah. much, and then you put the honey on top, and the honey sticks that whole top layer together. Oh, it's delicious. And I have that every wow. morning. The only thing is the bowl's getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a attesting to my diet tonight because I was going to go and get some more of those Weetos, but I, I'm having some water instead on the basis that if you feel hungry, you have some water instead. And I've got one of those cups that has one of those words, that has one of those sayings on it. And it says, anyone can be cool comma, but awesome takes practice. <laughs> I'm afraid my diet's not going too well at the moment. We're on the way up again. Yeah. And funny you should talk about diet. I just come across a little uh, story just before we came on today. Yeah. Of <clears throat> an, um, a, a, a story in the Daily Express. Pope Francis, the Catholic leader, has been ordered to lay off the pasta after piling on the pounds. Oh, right. Um, yes. He said the 78, he's 78, you know, he doesn't look 78. He Got looks to have had gained weight over the past two years, which Vatican doctors say is down to too much spaghetti and not enough exercise. I would thought he had a lot of exercise walking around that big old place, wait, shaking hands and what have you. Um, yep. In order to keep up with his busy schedules, schedule as leader, Pope Francis has been advised to go on regular walks and has been told to eat pasta no more than two times a week. But right. now this got me thinking. There's a new product in Waitrose at the moment, um, mm -hmm. Linda McCartney Open Ravioli. So there's, I think, two layers of pasta and ravioli on top. Now I have had quite a few of those recently, so I'm wondering if that's part to do with my with, with the reversal of my weight loss thing. Right. It might do. Uh, can I tell you one more quick story about moving house? Yes. The um, I I have some friends of mine who live well, well who lived just round the corner and they moved to Lincolnshire. Oh yeah. And, and um, it's funny because I um, because I was they they were kind of they they looked after me while my my parents were were away, 
And whenever I visit their house, knowing they've been to Lincolnshire, for some reason I'll stop out. The, I'll stop outside the house that they used to own. Yeah. Uh, these are my friends, Barbara and Tony. Sadly, Barbara Barbara died last year. Um, but, oh, but, I'll, but yes, I but, remember uh, that. Yes, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. But, but but I'll go to the house. I'll go to the house, and for some reason, I don't know why. And this is this is before before my friend died. I'll go to the house, and I can't bring myself to have my photograph taken there. Oh. And I I think it's because of the uh, of the nostalgia of so much happening there in the past. Yeah, so, yeah. so 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 what I what I come up with is 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 whenever is whenever I. Uh, meet somebody new generally speaking and they need a big intro to the to the area i'll take them to the house because then that's combining combining the new with the old yeah yeah that might make it easier but uh the um but i've i've only moved house twice i, I remember my grandfather was moving house and on the day he met he on the day he moved out um the a neighbour's cat came in and spent a penny, so that was on on, on the last day of the moving out. Oh just, no! Do you know it havoc. takes forever to get rid of that smell? Absolutely, oh, it's dreadful. I had this. I don't know why last year, but my cat when she was she doesn't come into the house now. She she comes into the kitchen, but then she doesn't come any further into the house because. Um, because I've got a bit of an asthma uh, issue with, with, with cats, which is actually very good. At, my asthma is, is non-existent at the moment. I'm not grabbing that. I haven't grabbed that blue thing now in almost two weeks. And that's the long... I don't know why. Some, so something must have happened. It's the longest I've not had that blue puffer thing on the asthma. Um, but one of the things I noticed was I, I, I think it is to do with it. She co so she comes in as far as the kitchen, which is nice and warm, and she has a bed in there, and, and, and that's it. Uh, but last year she got into the living room, and she, she kept weeing behind one of the plants. Yeah. And I, I didn't realise it until one day she was... And I suddenly, I, I can hear water. And then she was behind the plant, having a wee behind the plant. Oh, it stunk. And you can't get rid of that smell, dear. Mm -hmm. Oh God! It's yeah. there for weeks. Oh, it's horrendous. In the end, I actually went out and bought one of those Vax. You know the carpet cleaners. That yes, you put I've got I bought yeah. one of those. Did it with that, and also I bought this very very strong carpet deodorizer from the pet store. Lavender flavor. Oh, what a beautiful! It's ever so strong. You know, the entire house smells of lavender, but at least I didn't have to stink of cat wee. Oh, it's awful. Awful. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> but you did manage to... So your cat um, had a wee in that house as well, did she, or he? No, uh, no, no, no. It, it was a neighbour. It was a neighbour's cat at Sorry. my granddad's house. Yeah, the neighbour's cat. <laughs> and talking of cats, guess who's jumped up on my desk? Oh, your cat, yes. Yes. Tara, she's looking right at the screen. Tara the cat, give her cuddles. Hello, Tara. Uh, Can she see me? Um, I, I'll have a look. Hold on. I'll, I'll, I, I've paused the player, so I'll bring you. I'll, oh, I'll no, bring no, you don't unpause it because it'll all start. Echo Are you on Skype or phone? I'm on Skype. Oh yeah, it start echoing back. So you'll have to wait till you finish the call. <laughs> no, she can see you. She can see you. All right, Rory. Well, nice to talk to you, sir. Yeah, take care, Chris. Absolute Thank you very pleasure. much. You have a lovely Wednesday evening. Okay. Will do. Terio, Rory calling in there from uh, Fulham. He's a nice lad, he is. Uh, some messages coming through. Um, Matt says, I want to give you a weather update for my part of Cal Canada. It's 16 degrees centigrade today, which is 16, 32, 42, 52, which is 62, right about 62 Fahrenheit. So nice and warm in Canada today. We haven't had that here. I think we were about 10, 10 or 11 degrees here uh, today, Matt. So we haven't quite warmed up too much yet. Finally got rid of this, all the snow because he was like minus 30, I think. Minus 30 or 40 centigrade a while ago in Canada. Huh, glad I'm not there, mate. Oh, dear. We don't want any of that. What's the weather like in the UK at the moment? Well, yes. Uh, very windy. Extremely windy at the moment, Matt. Don't know where all this wind is coming from. Someone's eating baked beans, I reckon. That's what's going on there. Um, Anne uh, has sent a message in, and uh, Marge says it's 5 p.m. there. Okay. Hello, uh, 5 p.m. at, at Marge's end. Have, uh, have, has the time sorted itself out for you yet, Matt, Marge? I'm not sure. Have a look. Hello, who's calling in now? We got a call on there or not? 
If we have, I can't. Oh, I don't know if I've got that call up. Anyway, hang on. Let's try that again. Um, no, I think that's dropped out. Is that dropped out? Someone tried to call in on the phone. You can try again now if you want. I might have just missed you. Sorry. Give us another little call if you want to call in there. Um, uh, Anne says, talking of eBay, I had to send a portable stereo boombox back to Germany today. Oh, you see, this is the thing with all that eBay business. Actually having to send something back is a bit of a nightmare, isn't it? Because you could go down to the post office, wrap the bloody thing up. And it's so complicated now, isn't it? Sending something out and working out how much he's actually paying. It's, it's so expensive. I got like, I'll tell you what, I noticed that on my stamps. Just a minute, let me get them. Here we are, I've got my, my first class British stamps. Okay, first class British stamps. And on the back, you know, it says valid for items up to 240 millimetres long, 165 millimetres wide, 5 millimetres thick and 100 grams in weight. It used to be so easy to send something through the post. It would just be done on weight. It was so easy. And they, the post office made it uh, incredibly complicated now. Why do they do that? Why do they do that? So that's the old uh, post office. How much did I bet that cost you an arm and a leg? Sending that back to Germany, Anne. She says the sound was too tinny. I think I'll stick to curries in future. Oh, well, you can. I won't. I hate curries. I hate curries. If something goes wrong, they are pain in the arse, curries. Uh, it's not, no, and, and when they deliver something, you know, it's like the blokes don't want to really do, want, don't really want to be there. I don't buy anything from curries. You go to John Lewis, Anne. Go to John Lewis, dear. If you want, you know, check your price in curries, then go to John Lewis. If it's dearer, you just tell them what the price is in curries, and then you, you get the service and everything, darling. You will absolutely get the service and everything, OK? Um, uh, Anne also says, I used to love CB radio as a teenager and my handle was called Ginger Nut. And at school, the only nickname I had was Captain Caveman because of my fate of my surname, McCabe. It should be macabre, shouldn't it, Anne? <laughs> Uh, Brandon says, uh, five millimetres thick. Yes, that's for the first class ones, dear. Do try and keep up with this, dear. Uh, we're going to the phone in a second. Marge is on the phone, just waiting for us. We'll be with you in a second. Um, hello to Terry H, who's with us with his aches and pains. He's going to give us an eBay story in a minute because we have got some bits and pieces to talk about today. OK. Um, and. Hi to nephew Jimmy Butler, who is 18 today. So, Marge, are you there? Uh... Wait a minute. You're there. I'm I know hearing you're myself there. talk. Hey, eh? that's weird. What's oh, weird? I guess because I got headphones on. Echo, what? echo. No, you echo, sound alright this end. Right. Oh what no, maybe not. My... Are you moving a wire, dear? Well, I was hearing myself talk. Oh. What now about now? I'm not. Done it. You know how I just try to talk when you're hearing yourself talk. Oh well. Um. Do you want to try? Not now. It's okay. It's okay now. Okay. Okay. Could you just sing you sing Happy up? Birthday to Jimmy, my nephew, because it's his birthday and he is, he is with us tonight. Oh, okay. So I don't make him die of heart attack. He might Here's be with a chance. Meal. He's looking for a lady. Oh, well, hang on a minute. Hey. Happy, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jimmy. Happy birthday to you. Hey, and Jimmy. More. As a proper <laughs> lady singing here from the US of A in Oklahoma. <laughs> Yeehaw! Yeah, it's all downhill from now. <laughs> when you're a kid, you ever notice that you can't wait till you're just a little older and you hit like 20. Oh, I can't wait till I'm uh, 20. That's right. I can't wait till I'm 20. 21. So I and can then drink suddenly beer you're 50. That. God's sake. It mugs. So then... <laughs> for the first time, do you know what happened to me on Saturday? For the first time, I did a 50th, but not for the first time I did a 50th birthday party, but for the first time I did a 50th birthday party and I was older than the people whose birthday it was. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh well, I already. Well, it's funny when you get certain age, then you forget. I had to count. I said, "Am I?" Oh, I think we've lost you, Marge. Hello. No, we've completely lost Marge. Oh dear. That, that see, it does happen. I always thought people cut when you're listening to people on the radio, and uh, they suddenly die. I always thought they got cut off. Uh, you know, purposely, but uh, Marge has just started, I think, um, and I can't get her back at the moment. Never mind. Oh, she'll call back in a minute, I expect. Uh, that's gone a little bit wrong, that is. Never mind. Um, hello to Mark, who's one of our karaoke listeners. Good evening, Mark. Nice to have you with us this evening. He's coming along to sing at the karaoke tomorrow. Uh, I do karaoke tomorrow. If you're in the King's Cross area, uh, at a place called Central Station in King's Cross, okay? Central uh, Station in King's Cross. Uh, Matt says, speaking of electronic stores, wanted to let you know that here in Canada this week, a large chain of stores named Future Shop um, has closed down all their locations uh, due to online ordering taking over. They say that people were just not coming into their stores anymore. The retail world is sure changing. Oh, it sure is, Matt. Everyone's ordering online. Hello, who's on the line now? Who's calling in? Hello, it's Ray. Hello, Ray. How are you? <laughs> ah, it's the first time I've seen you live tonight. How marvellous. And do well, I look as good on television as I do in the flesh, Ray? Well, you're very clear, yes. Very clear. <laughs> but I, um, you know, I, I haven't got my on... Skype camera plugged in at the moment because you remember that computer trouble I told you about? Yes. So I haven't installed that yet. So I thought I'd just do it by sound tonight. Okay. So I, and I thought it, I was just enjoying the conversation uh, when she was cut off in Oklahoma. I thought, oh, well, I'll, I'll ring now. Yeah, good time to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so quick. Have you ever used uh, eBay? I've got some bits and pieces to talk about tonight, Ray. Well, um, um, I've just... never, I've never bidded for anything. My friend Norman and uh, Michael, they bid all the time, and they, they, they've got it down to a fine art. The, the last few seconds and. Oh, they they things. buy? Do they buy? Yes, but oh. I, I um, I'm I'm a bit new to buying things, so if it's cheap on Amazon, I buy or something like yeah, that. I've got right. a nice Radio Caroline book the other day for fifteen pounds. Oh, yes. Now, Radio Caroline is a uh, a pirate one of my station, subjects in the sixties. <laughs> what do you know about? Because I had a ra I had a pirate radio station, Ray. Did you really? I did, yes. Well, um, uh, it was called... In, um, where you are now, Bracken? No, 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 no. Or where was... um, this is back in the 80s um, mm -hmm. from Roehampton. It was called Southwest Radio. Right. And um, I, I, did get, I, get, I did get nicked for that, actually. <laughs> you did? I, oh, well, I, yeah, well, so... I, I got involved with Pirate Radio. Before I was a DJ, I, I used to make up programmes, yes. golden oldie programmes, yes. for a station called Radio Pandora. North London, and the guy there, he got raided. It was such a long time ago, I can tell you what year it was, 1968, and um, he was raided, and it was in the Daily Sketch. Some of your older viewers, listeners, yeah, will know the Daily, the Daily Sketch, Sketch, but yes. it got a mention that he got done for about, I don't know, a couple of hundred pounds. Right. But as my programme was on tape, I didn't get fined, no, but he did. Yeah, yeah. Radio Pandora, it was called, right, on yeah, a Sunday. I've heard of that. I've heard of that. In South West London, our biggest one in South West London was Radio Jackie. Did you did you hear of that? Oh, yes, a famous one. Yeah, that was the most famous pirate radio station after the um, marine offences. So people were so chuffed. They thought, they thought, what can we do? So they started their own stations. I think it was because of the marine offences bill. Yeah. And Radio 1 was started, as you know, in 67. And so then a lot of guys started up their own stations in bedrooms. And the, the favourite one was the block of flats. It was about 13, 14 storeys yes, high. They, yes, They broadcast from on the top of the flat. Yes. Well, we, I, was, I was quite high up anyway. We were only two storeys high, but we were like on a little bit of a hill. So basically I had this, this aerial that um, someone made out of a, a, a long stick, a piece of dowling, I think it's called, a long stick. And he put either uh, two pieces of aluminium tubing on, on yeah. this stick, you know, sort of a little bit far, maybe a centimetre apart. I wouldn't know how to do that. I, well, I was all... <laughs> yeah, and, and like, well, you know, with the coax, like TV aerial cable. Oh, the coaxial cable, right, yeah. Right, so the middle bit he would connect to the top part mm. and the 
outside Braden, he would oh. connect to the bottom part of this <laughs> this this homemade aerial, and that oh. itself would be on a big stick and on the roof, and the wire down into your bedroom. And there oh. he had made me, and I was always very impressed with that because I tried to make a couple of electrical things myself, Ray, um, but but with with no success. They just didn't work. But he made a transmitter, <laughs> which was no bit bigger, I suppose, than a couple of CDs next to mm. each other. And this was powered by a car battery. And then you had another wire going into it, uh, which plugged into your disco mixer. And, and, and that it, it, it was as simple as that. Really? Yeah. And of course, if, they, if you got busted, they, they uh, uh, confiscated your equipment, didn't they? Well, they did. <laughs> but the <laughs> guy, did. I, the guy I, I got involved with, he, he had a very strong signal. And um, I lived in Chinkford at the time. Right. And I think he was living somewhere like Alexandra Palace or Muswell Hill or somewhere high up in London. Yeah. And he had this wonderful signal. And I thought, this sounds good. So I sent in a tape. Uh, and I think I recorded it on seven and a half inches a second, uh, reel to reel. So it was pretty good quality. And um, I put a couple of pirate radio jingles on it uh, yes. from the past. I say it's 68. And um, he said, oh, this is great. Keep them coming. Of course, I did about an hour. And um, as you well know, when you do an hour show, people think, oh, that, that was good, an hour. It took an hour. No, the preparation and finding the records. and well, I used yeah. to stop the table, course, pause it and you know, mistakes, and I think I even put in a couple of old um, TV commercials or something, I don't know, whatever, jingles, you know, yeah, from jingles, TV yeah, commercials, jingles. just to make it a bit more um, professional, sound, a bit. breach of copyright, of course, you couldn't do anything like that today, no, but, but when well, we were kids, I mean, you know, I was only, I can't remember exactly well, how e old e I was. Even then you weren't, you know, you were breaching copyright then, but mm. no one seemed to worry about that. Certainly the no. record companies didn't worry about that. because no, it was they small took, fry. You were small they, fry. Right? Exactly. They took the opinion because the, the pirates were playing <laughs> a lot of the music before the BBC did. Mm. And therefore, um, the, the, I, I think that the record companies looked at it as a way of getting their music heard. And then in those days... You would then go into the record shop. Hello, I heard this on the radio. Well, of mm. course, now, you know, I can sit here. It's amazing what we can do now, Ray. Mm. I can sit here with a couple of clicks, download practically anything the that has ever been The technology is fantastic, isn't it? You wonder what's coming next, don't you, in the next yeah. five years. You think, yeah, what's going to happen? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and even doing, doing this, you know. Yeah, here fantastic. I am doing, you, you saw the picture. It's not quite television, but it's not far off it. Mm. And we, you go back maybe three years, you remember those little blocky images on your computer mm. of people's videos and that, and look yeah. how it's come along, though. But the uh, te uh, and telephone with pictures is something we just dreamed of, right? Oh, yeah. You know, t yeah. 10 or 15 years ago, you know. We, we knew it was coming, but we never thought it would be exactly like No. This, Mark's this in um, uh, North London. He says, on my radio in North London, I can hear Radio Caroline, or it could be Radio Jackie. Now, it's probably Radio Caroline. I don't think you'd get Radio Jackie there, Mark. Yeah. But that was the yeah that was my, one of the most famous land based stations, Radio Jackie. Yeah. Yes, indeed. I think it was. they became did they become legal? I think they did. Yes, 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 mm -hmm. they did. They are mm -hmm. on, and they have a studio in Kingston, I believe. Oh, right, just it's right, actually, yeah. I'm sure it's just. I think I've gone past it. Forgive it's, me, I I could talk about pirate radio of the '60s and early '70s, but. I'm not so interested as I was when I was much younger, you know, so no. it's passed me by a little bit. But it, I used to be fascinated by it because the the pirate stations, the big ships off of um, Clacton and Frinton and the faults uh, around the Thames Estuary, that's, that was really a time to be around for music because it was a revolution. And uh, that's what really got me interested in um, the whole game of DJing and whatever, you know. Did you see the film When the Boat Rocks or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I was a bit disappointed with that. I went to the special showing of that because we had a weekend up at Harwich and uh, friends of mine who run RadioLondon.co.uk, that's uh, Chris um, and uh, Mary Payne, yes. they were there, and as was Dave Cash and Keith Skews and people from the days of the 60s pirate stations. And uh, we had a special showing of the film The Boat That Rocked at the Harwich Electric Palace 
old theatre there, oh, cinema. Right, yes. And to be quite honest, when it was when I watched the film, I was happy when it ended because Dave Cash quite liked it, but oh, you know, lots Dave, of, lots of lots of us know, were quite disappointed with the the, the way it, what it it, it 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 could have been so much better. Yes, because we, we remember the original Pirates, and uh, this was really made for a different generation. Right. But it was good that it made people aware uh, that it was such an important thing to happen. So on that basis, I'll give it I'll give it about seven out of ten. But I I was happy when it ended because uh, it was going on a bit, and I thought, oh, it's losing the point. Right. But uh, I'm vi- I'm a bit biased, you see. Any of your listeners who are listening in there and saying, well, that guy's I can tell you're old. I'm 67. So if I'm if I'm talking about the 60s, I'm talking about something that when I was a teenager and early 20s, yeah, which was. Uh, people can relate. It was a very special time for me, and uh, people of, of my course. age look back at it still and think think it was a special time. You know, yeah, a revolutionary time. Hmm. But you like pirate, the old pirate style, don't you? You know the. Well, yeah, um, you, I, I, um, I, I, I worked. I heard you say Dave Cash. I worked with yeah. Dave. Oh, brilliant! Yeah, he's smashing. Very friendly. He's wonderful. He, yeah. he works with me at. Um, uh, he's in Liberty. Kent at the moment. Yes, he's on Kent, and I I was with him when he got that job. Um, oh wow! He yeah, was, he was working with me at um, uh, Liberty Radio. Yes. Oh, there's a. Oh, I for, I've forgotten you were with them. Yes. yes. I used to listen to that and didn't realise that. that you were you were a liberty man. Well, yes. I've I got to tell you, Ray. You know, first of all, I, I remember one particular night. Um, he 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 was before me and it had been for a while, and I, you know it was just like it was a lovely chap. What a nice man! He's such yes. a nice Canadian man. Canadian originally, eh? But, uh, can I, uh, yes, well, I, yes. No, born in Bromley. Yeah. Born in Bromley, but broadcast in Canada and got all his experience. Yeah. And then came back to Britain when the pirates started. Lovely and man. Course, uh, and everyone said, oh, he's a Canadian. But no, he's from Bromley. Yeah. Well, this, this would be 1999, 2000. Right. And yep. so he was on, I think, 10 till 1. No, 10 till 2. Yes, he was on 10 till 2. And at the time, I was working at a place called the Black Cap in Camden, which is, you, you will know. But I was working for 25 two. years, dear. <laughs> yes, 18 years. 18 years. Oh, um, wow. So... Um, I was due to start at two o'clock, um, so I I did see him a couple of times when I when I on certain nights. But on a Monday night, I was working till two. So what I'd have to do is go into the radio station, record an hour show about eight o'clock, right, and then it would get to two o'clock, and he would push play and leave the studio, and then I would get there round about half past two and then get the, my, the rest of the show together. And at three o'clock, we'd have the news, and then I would take over at three, and no one would know that mm-hmm. that part of it was recorded. But if, if he wasn't big enough for me, on for one week, guess who was on directly after me? No, go on. David Hamilton. Really? And yeah. I remember... Good Sitting God, there. yeah. That must Absolute. have been after he did... Uh, he used to be a Thames uh, continuity. Yes, announcer. Thames Television, yes. Mm. Yes. And he would, he would he came in, oh. and I was sitting there thinking, oh, my God, David Hamilton's coming in. David, I'm <laughs> going to have to talk to him. What do I say to David Hamilton? And he came in, he came in the door, and I'm shaking like a leaf. He said, <laughs> hello, you must be Chris. He says, yeah. He said, do you want a cup of tea? I'm just going to make one now. Oh, right, yeah, OK. So he Christ. came in with his cup of tea, and I took a sip on it. Well, I don't think he'd rinse the cup out. <laughs> All I could taste was soap bubbles. But, of course, I didn't say anything, not to David Hamilton, you know, yes. and he was such a nice man. Yeah. That it was Ken, Don- Ken Don who called him Diddy, Diddy David, first there was, of all. There was only one person there I really didn't <laughs> like, and it was a woman, oh, I can't remember her name now, but she was vile. She was a horrible person. Um, I, I I can't remember now. Can't remember what her name was. The name's gone. I'll, I'll have a look up here and see but if I can find it's it. It's funny her. how um, we're speaking about Dave Cash. Yeah, he he was the uh, one of the original Radio London DJs. Yes, yes. And you remember Radio Caroline was just a few months, nine months before or whatever. Yeah. But uh, Dave Cash and Kenny Everett were the legendary broadcasters. You know, their yeah. show was. 
fabulous. Are you still there? I am indeed, yeah. I'm just trying to find the... Um... <laughs> I'm looking at your picture and you're a little bit behind on my screen. Oh, yeah, I know. will be. I'm just trying to find that person who was horrible name. But uh, the woman, uh, was she a famous broadcaster or... Um... I'd never heard of her, to be honest. Mm. I was no, thinking I'd the other day... I'd never heard of her. Thinking uh, the other day when... I'm looking on Wikipedia yeah. and her name's not on there. I would know it if, straight away. Mind Did you, you listen I... to LBC when it first started, first couple of days, and Janet Street Porter was on there. Do you remember? Yes. In the morning, about nine o'clock. Yeah. Janet Street Porter, yeah. yeah. He started oh, yeah. on LBC. Yeah, yeah. 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 And you just thought, who's this with this strange voice? I mean, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm almost a Cockney born in Walthamstow, but um, her, her voice was something else, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes. Um, that's Monty Modlin was another one. Do you remember Monty Modlin? Monty? Modlin, no. LBC. No, who's that? He was quite a personality. He did a little uh, showbiz phoning type thing. Yeah, he's dead now. He, he was a Jewish man, but he was, he was very popular on radio. You know, Cockney talking yeah. about London, how it used to be. You know? Don't remember him. Did you actually manage to get on any of the ships at all? No. Uh, it was before. But it's funny that you should say that. I was going to say... When Dave Cash was out there with Kenny Everett, Kenny Everett had his 19... He was 19 when he went out there. Gosh. And he was, at his 20th birthday, I think, was Christmas Day, 1964. Yeah. And so he was the youngest ever DJ. So if you could imagine someone like Kenny Everett, 19, I would have been about 16, coming up 17. And so... Um, the idea of a, a disc, disc jockey had to be you had to be just that little bit older, you know. I remember someone like uh, yes, Noel Edmonds wanted to be a pirate DJ because he 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 didn't happen until Radio Luxembourg uh, around about 1969. He was about the same age as me, so he got into broadcasting at the right time. But yeah. um, he was too young for pirates at the time. Yeah, mm, mm, mm. it was a great great time to be around. I I forget what time uh, what year you were born, Chris. So 19... I can relate better when I. 60... Well, I don't know the year you were born. 63, 1963. 63. Ah, well, there you yeah. are. So, yes. 63. This, the pirate radio thing was yeah. 64 to 67, the most important yeah, part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, as I say, people of your age or people into broadcasting know how important that time was. Oh, you know? yes. That's why we got what we got today, I think. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, we'd still be sitting here in dinner suits just reading news. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh, well, anyway, I'll, I'll let somebody else have a go now. Because, lovely to um, talk to you tonight, Ray. Please call in again sometime. Yes, I will do. Absolutely. Uh, see if you can get your call back from Oklahoma. Yeah. Oklahoma, <laughs> USA. Yeah, but I'm going to call her back now. Yeah, have to. All I'll right. see you on uh, Friday. Cheerio, Ray. All the best. Nice to see you. Bye-bye, Ray. Bye-bye. Take care. There we are, Ray. He um, actually plays a, a ukulele, which is pretty cool, I think. A ukulele. We'll talk to Marge in a second. Um, I'll just get, get Marge up on the line there. Uh, Terry H <clears throat> says, on the subject of eBay, I decided to sell a mobile phone on eBay. It sold almost straight away. However, the dispatch address was to a hotel. However, it was verified on PayPal, so I thought it would be OK to send it. I sent it special delivery and I withdrew my money into my bank account. Days later, the seller informed me that he had not got the package and filed a claim against me. Um, I sent all the information to eBay to prove that I had sent it. Didn't matter as eBay favoured the buyer and refunded him, which, of course, I had to pay for. Absolute nightmare. So I've come off eBay for now. That is that's awful, isn't it? That's awful, Terry. Um, I only sold... I think I sold some records once. Only only one lot of records I sold. Um, here's my experience of eBay. And I sent the records and they didn't pay. And I think I might have sent them one one message which went unanswered. And I just kind of just wrote it off and put it down to experience, really. You know. And the other time I did sell a pair of speakers that's um, just a couple of years ago, selling a pair of speakers on eBay. And the bloke says, yeah, I'll buy them. And he put his bid in and I accepted. And then, and then after after the thing had finished and he's accepted, right, um, then he started asking other questions about them. I said, well, just come round and have a look. And he made an appointment to come round and he didn't. He didn't. 
So there you are. And will you stop moaning? What a miserable old cow you are. Someone else is in someone else. We're not all interested in the crap that you watch on the telly. She's just say, I'm going to slash my wrist from boredom. No more pirate radio. Don't be so miserable old cow. Other people deserve to deserve their things as well, dear. We find it very interesting. Very, very interesting indeed. Talking about that, Anne. Oh, dear. If she was on the phone, she'd want to talk about Towie and all that crap all the time. Uh, she also says, talking of eBay, uh, sorry, I used to love CB radio as a teenager. This is Anne. My, oh, I've read that, haven't I? Your ginger nut thing. Where is it now? OK. Yeah, that's it. So we'll try and get Marge back uh, on the phone now. Um, Matt says, I must admit, I use eBay very rarely. When I do, I almost always choose the buy it now option, which I've done before rather than bidding. But in most cases, I use Amazon for almost everything order online. I love the one click ordering. So brilliant. What is your take on eBay? So that that's um, that that's my take on eBay really there. You know, it's it, it's all right. It's all right. But I did have like difficulty with it. OK, Marge, do you want to try a game now, darling? Uh, I don't know. Can you hear me all right? I can hear you all right. Terry H says, I thought the radio stuff was interesting. Yeah, so did I, Terry. It's Anne. She's addicted to things like Terry and dining with whoever. And what else is she into now? Oh, James O'Brien show or Loose Women and all that. She likes all that old crap that none of us like. We're too intelligent for you, Anne. That's the trouble. Hopefully speak to Anne a little bit later on and she can discuss her, her Eurovision thing that everyone else is so much interested in. All right, Marge, go on, dear. Well, I was going to say if I can't keep on time, I'm going to give up. <laughs> you keep dropping out tonight, do you? Do you lose the whole internet? Well, this time of day is peak time. Ah, you know, right. you know peak, peak time? So I probably won't be able to call in at 5 o'clock and kids get home. Yeah. And it up with my internet now if you went after six it would be different if i brought breaking up too bad i'll just stop am right. i still clear yeah, yeah you are you are you're clear i'm standing over i'm standing over here by the router hopefully <laughs> that i got all new equipment and everything but five o'clock it's always kind of like this well I yeah you, get you the... might have new equipment but how does the um uh, internet actually work down there in oklahoma are you through wires or through wi-fi or what yeah, you know these tomato cans? You cut up the end and you put a string through it? That's what I got. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's a actually. long piece of string, lady. <laughs> a very, very long um, piece of string. Yeah. No, uh, I've got a router, and then it goes through what they call a POE, a little a little square box that, that, you know, that converts the signal. And it runs out the house on a cable to a pole, like an antenna pole. Right. I guess that's what you got to call them in there. I don't know. And then I've got a little uh, round, looks like a can, uh, like a can, set okay, on the yes. pole. Yeah. And it's pointed toward a tower that's about a mile from me. So it's like a signal. It's picking up a signal from the tower. Because I'm out here in the woods, out in the country. There's no DSL, no cable, anything like that. So, But I'm on the lowest budget uh, internet. I may have to pay for the extra internet. They want like twenty dollars a month more for higher streaming, but yes, I don't think it helped me much because most time, like I said, the, the day that I I can actually I talked to you last week, fine, but we were a different time, you know. But I forget about the five o'clock. It's like five uh, five o'clock traffic on the highway, you know, the oh, super yeah. highway. Yeah, it's yeah. the same thing. When a lot of people get on our internet, then the, 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 it kind of messes with the bandwidth. Yes. <laughs> anyway, yes, yes. I don't. If I'm not breaking up, I was talking about your uh, questions uh, that you had. Um, I forgot now. I had it wrote down. I can't find the piece of paper. How long do, can, do you want me to talk here? I, I was going to answer some of those questions. Oh, uh, Terry thinks he thinks the way you say router is funny. We say router. Router. Router? We say router. You know router. what router yes. means to me? It's like a pig rooting in the ground. You're sticking his nose <laughs> me, rooting. Let me that's router. Well, let me tell you, it means something very different to the Australians, the term root. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been watching uh, TV. I may turn into uh, British if I keep w listening to you and watching British television. Are you picking, up, are you picking up the accent I've yet, been watching. Marge? Huh? Are you picking up the accent yet? 
Uh, no, I'd probably not. I'd be a Southern British, I guess. Right. <laughs> I yeah, don't know. Do yeah. y'all have Southerner, Southern British there with uh, kind of slang? I don't know if what kind of there's different accents even in Great oh, Britain. Yes, I yes, know that. Yes, mm. it depends on where you you're posh or you're Brit, you know, blue blood, I guess. Posh. <laughs> but anyway, I found online where I can watch all your television shows. I didn't know you had Kentucky Fried Chicken. Oh in, yeah, there's in, loads of them. Loads of Kentucky Fried oh, Chicken. I, I never seen. Yeah, loads. <laughs> No wonder you're getting fat like us Americans oh, eating that Kentucky. Well, of course, not you. You don't well, eat the chicken. I should be having a few of those get, before I go to sleep later. Yeah, you're getting skinny, though. How much weight have you lost? I am not getting skinny. You're having a laugh. It's yeah, on you way, are. It's on the way back that up again. Video, it might be my face well, that's gone skinny. Well, the video yesterday, you look skinny. Well, the fat's moving downwards, I think. It's all hanging around okay. me. Oh, Anne wants to point now, out. Listen, Anne wants to point out she's got 11 O-levels and one A-level in Spanish. Half a degree in history. Half a degree. What's half a degree? <laughs> Actually, uh, let me, let me Hola, talk to you. Anne. Como está? I'm going to ring you later, Anne. I'll ring you on the phone later, on the, um, uh, on the Skype later, if you've got Skype. All right, darling. Anyway, go on, Marge. You're saying? I like the A-levels. Uh, is that like what we, we have here, A, B, C, D, or F? That's your grades. Is right. that kind of like what that A-level means? Like you're, you re, get a reward, get an A, like a high, uh, I can't think what I'm trying to say. But anyway, like you passed. Yeah, is that well, the a? An, no, an A-level is, okay. no, that that's not a grade. The A-level okay. is the name of the exam. So oh, okay. you could have you could have a an A level pass or an A level fail. You see what I mean? It's oh, not okay. So yeah. well, I always wanted to get an A for failing. <laughs> but you know, a lot of a lot of the things have changed to... now. When I was at school, we had O levels. They don't have yeah. those anymore. Mm. You know, the only thing I failed in school, yeah, was English. <laughs> Really? I failed it. <laughs> yeah, I had to redo my one one year of English. God. Can you believe that? I made A's in Spanish. Oh, I thought you'd think right. with your own language you well, could actually some, pass it. Give us some Spanish <laughs> oh, I have, then. You remember participles, dangling decibels, whatever the heck they call adjectives. All that stuff just went one ear out the other. Oh, I said, my well, God, we, what are you talking about? Dangling participles. About. Oh, man. <laughs> we don't even understand. Uh, uh, Mark, uh, who's in London, uh, says, did I see the... That we had a documentary on the television last night about KFC. We had actually had a documentary about it, and they were saying that's what that, I've been watching today as a documentary. Yeah, a what on on the internet? I was watching it today on your BBC oh, One yes. or something. Well, we we had the well, one today. I found a website. I'm watching all your your television. That's right. Well, we had this that. thing today about KFC, and we were talking about pulled chicken. Uh, it, it just looked awful. As Terry oh, did, it looked like you know, dog you food. You actually brought me. I I was thinking about buying some chicken. I said I'm trying to stay. I'm trying. I've been really good being a vegetarian. Oh, and okay. I thought, well, I had this craving. I thought I almost gave in. I went went to the meat department. I looked at the chicken, and you know, I wanted to throw up. I yeah. I was seeing my my pet hen. I've got a coachin. You know what a yeah. coachin is? Cajun, it's yeah. a little small ba bantam. I don't right. know if you got them there, but they're a little small hen. And all I could see was her, you know, and I, and I wanted to throw <laughs> I said, well, I guess I'm broke. I don't have to worry about it. I'm not a chicken eater anymore. <laughs> yeah. Does she, like <laughs> you have a pet? Does she give you eggs? Yeah, she has eggs, of course. And all, yeah. all chickens lay. I, what's funny is I don't have a rooster. She's just a pet. I built her a place outside with a uh, real nice house and yard, you know, run that's enclosed to keep all the varmints from killing her, you know. And I have a, a pigeon, a male pigeon, pigeon. which the female, uh, their pen got broke in by a, a raccoon. I mean, he tore the wire. He he destroyed it. Oh, I, I had to go with heavier wire. I never seen anything destroyed that pen. Anyway, it killed his, his uh, uh, mate. Oh. So he's by himself. So I stuck this white male pigeon in there with my black coaching hen. And I go out there, I said, well, where is he? I wonder where he's at. He's in there. He's in the pen with her. And I look in the box where, you know, I gather her eggs. He was sitting on her eggs. <laughs> oh, so they become <laughs> friends. <laughs> you know, they're huge. Anyway, he had two of them covered. I mean, she, they're not quite as big as a regular standard chicken egg. 
they're about almost three quarters. I mean, they still make a good meal. I said, you silly boy, why are you, I hope he didn't breed her or something. I don't know. What would you have? Chicken, chicken pigeons? <laughs> Pickens or whatever. What would you call a chicken pigeon? Anyway, I said, I'm going to have to get you a girlfriend, boy. Let <laughs> me sitting on her eggs. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> His name, I thought he was a girl when I, I hand raised her. I've always, uh, I, I like the symbology of the dove. You know, even in your religion, it may, re represents peace, yes. you know. And I, I called him Sophia until he got older, of course. I said, well, he's not a girl. <laughs> Sophia means wisdom. And uh, I said, well, I'm going to have to rename you. I'll call him Sophia now. And then he's with that black hen. Her, I named her, you called her, uh, well, you helped me name her. You said, baby. So, but I said, I had another, I had a cat named Baby, but I said, I'll just call her BB. That's the same thing. You call her BB, so her name's BB. <laughs> but I, I couldn't believe him sitting on him. I'm talking about stuff. I didn't answer your little questions. I don't want to take up too much time. Uh, what was one of your questions that I wanted to answer about traveling or something? Traveling? Uh, yeah, you said moving. Or what was the question moving, about moving? Yes. How many times have you moved? And was it ever... Actually, I, do you know, I haven't even... We've done an hour show now. I know. And I, I, haven't, I haven't actually read... I've, I've, I managed to get the questions up there on Facebook, but I haven't actually read them out on the show. <laughs> because I've been so, you know, we've been chatting away about this and the other. Well, one of the questions was, what were your home moving experiences like? And were any of... Was it ever a mistake that you moved? Well, the kid, my parents got divorced. And when I was uh, 17, so I had to go with my dad. But that was a horrible experience. I don't want to get too negative there, but um, he took me away from my mother. So I had to stay with him for two years until I got old enough, you know, I could leave. And so uh, it was from Oklahoma to Texas, that move. And, of course, even younger before that, we did move to Iowa. We moved to Iowa for a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and owned a cafeteria, which it was. A, I wish we could have stayed in Iowa. Iowa was a right. beautiful place. The, the what, rich, what, what, dark what's, soil, what's almost like England. I mean, what's the difference between Iowa and where you are now? Well, it's it. Well, when it gets cold, or well, that's when I was a kid. I, I don't know how it is now. The people were very friendly, very trustworthy. Uh, the land. I have a lot of allergies, like you, you know, sneezing my head off every time I turn around. Yeah. I wasn't allergic to anything up there, the dirt or anything. I mean, and uh, most of them were overweight like me. <laughs> a little bit overweight. I mean, nobody was fat, but I mean, everybody up there eat what they call corn-fed beef. As, of course, that's back when I eat meat. And corn-fed beef is the cattle are, are fed organically, and, you know, that corn will fatten you up. So, I mean, it was, and like I said, everything was just so much different. It was just uh, kindness and sociable. Everybody knew everybody. Well, we had the cafe, and we was having some bad times. And people would come in after they ate at home, and yeah. they'd come to our cafe and buy something just to help keep our doors open. <laughs> and you don't have, you know, because of the times. Of course. So, well, yeah. my wife just fixed my supper, but I'm, we're going to come in here to buy something, you know, a little drink or a mm. scoop of ice cream, anything. Because it was getting bad, you know. Um, and I thought, well, that's, <laughs> at one time, our, our waitresses didn't show up. And I was nine years old. What I was, waited tables was, at nine years old, and our two, both of our waitresses didn't show up for work, and we had these shifts that came in. They were building a man-made lake. It was over there by Panora, Iowa, uh, Panora Linden, Iowa. It's, it's west of um, Des Moines is the, is the capital of Iowa. Yes. It's west of there. Anyway, they were building an artificial lake, and so they had their crew, you know, in shifts that would come in. And uh, we'd serve them, and of course, you know, they they go in about an hour. Here come the second shift. Well, that evening, nobody, but my mother and I, and the cook, were there. I mean, both waitresses called in. Well, we're we're not coming. You know, I yeah. said, Oh God, what are we gonna do? <laughs> you know. So me at nine years old, I was setting up plates and and getting water, and we were we were doing it. But we looked around, and people would leave the money underneath yes. their plate. And actually, some of them would pick up their own plates, take them, and put them in the in the the, the dirty plate bins. Yeah. I mean, people don't do stuff like that. They probably just walked out, you know. Well, did you, so you had to do <laughs> the whole. Do you did you have to stay there, the you know, for the whole shift because your waitresses didn't turn up? 
Yeah, well, I bet though most of the people did their own like self service. They got their oh, own okay. tea. Yeah, they would leave their money beside their plate and, and stuff like. And then some of them would take their plates and put them in the in the dirty plate and and say thank you and have a great. They wasn't upset, yeah. you know, or nothing because it was yeah. hard. I mean, because there's quite a bit of people coming in, but they everybody like I said knew everybody. <laughs> but what was comical was the ones that came in eating our Texas chili. Texas chili. <laughs> uh, these are people. I Texas like chili. chili. I mean, you, I, I like uh, you probably have, chili. have had hot Texas chili, have you? Yeah. Hot, super hot. We had one man come in, and he'd order a big bowl of Texas chili, and yes. then he'd get a big old glass of water, and he said, keep that water coming. He'd, he'd sit there and had water run out of his eyes. He said, boy, this is good chili, but boy, does it burn. And then he come back the next day, and he said, you know that chili is as hot going out as it was going in <laughs> I laugh because yeah, them, them Iowa people they don't they don't have stuff like that, you know. They don't they wasn't used to the kind of foods we we ate in Texas, but especially the black eyed peas. But anyway, all the moving from Iowa, get back to where I'm moving, and uh, then I moved back to Oklahoma in '76. Pretty well stayed here. We moved to different houses because our parent, my parents, you know, off and on there was having issues, so. It wasn't a very good time in my life, but I was happy they were divorced because they fought all the time. You know. And what do you live in now? What do you live in now, Marge? Huh? Where do you live? What do you live in now? I'm in Oklahoma now. And you live in a, I'm out, in a house or what? I, no, my camper. You, uh, you remember my camper? I don't think I told you. I, yeah, I but other, in a other big, people don't know. Field. You're not just talking to me. There are other people listening, dear. Oh, well, I thought you. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, for, I forgot. Yeah. I'm just talking to you. Yeah, it's a fifth wheel RV. We bought my brother. I say we. My brother. He bought this 15 acres, and he bought a big, nice. Oh, they're called solitaire, brand new. They're, they're mobile homes, but when they put them together, they look like a house. Right. Okay. It was a quick home, you know. Yeah. And I said, well, he gave me this five acres. Of, of the four, there's 14, I'm sorry. I see. Yeah, 14 acres, and he gave me four acres. Yes. So uh, he bought this RV. You know what an RV is? No, it's I didn't a know. fifth wheel. It's a fi it has uh it has a little thing on top. It's called a fifth wheel RV. Right. It's a huge. It's pretty big, and it has a sliding outsides. I mean, for one person by themselves, I mean, it's it's a lot of room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I said, well, there's me an instant house. Of course, I tied it down because we have tornado season, you know, and yes, the wind, yes, and yes. to make sure. <laughs> I've had I've sat in here one time though. It's so comical. how do you stop it from taking off when you get a wind? How do you stop that sort of? It's tied down. That's what I mean. I I drove down these twisted. Twisted stakes. I don't know what you call them. They, they twist in the ground. They're real that, long, they? real long stakes. It are they specially made for that, Marge? Are they specially made so that you put them in the ground and the, the thing doesn't take off? Well, see, when I when I screw them into the ground, then I bolted them with cables across the frame. It probably if it blew away, it'd be the top half that blows away. I mean, the frame will still be here. I mean, <laughs> you know, if a really bad tornado takes it, that doesn't really matter be in the cellar yeah but um it probably just blow off the top half because yeah. the frame like i said is, t is tied down but uh you're anyway happy where you are it's, now uh, aren't you huh you're happy where you I'm are sorry. now aren't you oh yeah i've got yeah. i got all this acreage and my my uh my oak trees and and uh my animals and 18 cats and 18 cats, uh God. I'm out in the woods and i look across the now we're finally getting rain we've been in a drought for seven years Get some pictures up it, of your cats. That's what we need. Um, I twittered you some things there. I don't know if you ever you you don't use the tweeting thing that much, not, but I no, plan I really. plan with the Twitter thing. <laughs> not I tweeted really. you a cat there. Um, anyway, um, across the road from me, there's a big lake, and it's finally starting to fill back up. You know Have that you old saying drought, about the seven you? years drought, even in your Bible, you know, it's yeah. talking about the drought. And I said, this year, I've got a lilac bush. I've had it four or five years. And it make one little old, I mean, no matter how much I watered it, took care of it, it had one little, or one or two little uh, lilac uh, tufts on it, you know, the little yes, round flowers yes. on it. Never made nothing. This year, it's completely covered. I said, that must be a sign. We're, <laughs> we're getting rain, and it's our grass is growing, and the trees are budding Well, you'll out. be able to I grow said, your own fruit and veg again soon, Marge. Huh? Grow I'm your sorry? own fruit and veg again soon. 
I've got potatoes in the ground. Good girl. Um, Good girl. Send some gr- over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my well, Marge, lovely to talk to you today, my darling. All right? Okay. Well, anyway, that's that. I, I, at least I answered one of your questions. We just moved around here in Oklahoma mo- after that, mostly. Yeah, so yeah, I, good. I hope this is it. Even though I'm living on wheels, I hope I don't have to go unless I move again. I'll come to England. No, you stay <laughs> when, where when you I, are, darling. When I win the Oklahoma lottery, if you, if you I'll like come it to there, stay where you are. I don't think I'll ever move from here. To be honest, I like it no. here too much. Lovely to talk no. to you tonight, Marge. Thanks for calling in, my darling. All right. Sorry for my. Bye bye, Marge. Issue. Hopefully, it'll be better next time. Cheerio Talk to you now, later, my darling. That's fantastic. There we are, Marge uh, from um, uh, Oklahoma, chatting to us there. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Brandon. It's very kind of you. Why does he keep say keep saying knickers? Matt wants to know. Here's a random question: Have you ever heard of a food named? What does that say? Just a minute. Let me put my glasses on. A food called. Poutine, P-O-U-T-I-N-E. It's very popular here in Canada, made up of chips, gravy and cheese curds. Very delicious indeed. Poutine. Never heard of that, Matt. No, that's a new one on me. What is poutine? I don't know. Terry, I doubt very much. I doubt very much that um, that it looks anything like that. <laughs> um... Okay, Anne. Anne says, "Excuse me, I have eleven O levels." Now let's just uh, let's just try and get Anne up on the line for you. Uh, there we are. And ha- oh, where's I've lost the um? Where's that gone now? Is that it there? One second, I'll read this back to you. Uh, Anne says, "Let's have a look." There it is. She has eleven O levels and one A level in Spanish, half a degree in history, English, and dairy. Plus, I read the Daily Express and the Guardian. I've told you I watched the crap to get my super brain arrest. What super brain is this, Anne? Hello, hello. This is the super brain from Lewisham. I doubt very much you're a super brain, dear. <laughs> All you do is moan when anyone else <laughs> other than me is. T- you tend not to moan when I'm talking, but in it, virtually every caller that calls in. You moan about them. And can I just ask, that photograph of yours on Skype, oh, dear me, that's a bit old, isn't it, dear? It's not. It's oh, not. Oh, come off it, darling. It's one of my party nights. That's, that's not old. That's got about 20 years old, that picture. Oh, it's probably about five or six. Don't know anything like that now. <laughs> Listen, us women are entitled to moan. That's what we do best, Chris. That is all you do. Yeah, but we love it. It's not moaning. It's called communication, darling. Well, I've got a little message. I'm not going to tell you where it's from. Uh, I think Anne may be intoxicated, it says here. Oh, for God's sake, don't be so ridiculous. I'm what? quite teetotal. I'm high on life. I'm Irish. That's not me saying that. Oh, it's not Brandon again. He was saying that last week. No, about- it's not Brandon either. <laughs> no, definitely not. I'm on carbonated soda water. Um, I've drank two glasses while I've been um, listening to your show, fabulous as ever, internationally acclaimed global sensation that you are, Chris, all over the world. What are you just going on about, woman? I'm just, I'm just a happy person. I'm euphoric. I'm happy. Some people don't get that and they think people are high on something. I don't need any intoxicated thingies. I'm just a happy person. And I get happy when I'm doing happy things. So, yeah, so... Of course I'm not on anything. Right, well, well here's, here's a question for you, Anne. Go here's on. Well, first of all, have you got any anything to say on all my um all my uh, all my questions tonight? Oh, well some of them were quite touching. I was really struck by the one you said about age and about getting older and is Yes. Now I tell you why I asked this. On the um uh, television tonight, I can't remember what I was watching, maybe a news thing or something like that. And uh, uh, one of the things that was said was, we're not as relevant as we get older. Now, do you feel that? Because I certainly do. Mm, It's such a good point. It's such a good point because I'm 47 and I'm in the sandwich generation. I didn't think you were that old, to be honest. Oh, did you not? No, I, I didn't. I didn't actually put you in your 40s, believe it or not. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm, I am serious. Wow. There I mean, you it's go. funny. You're a miserable old cow. 
<laughs> but you don't look like you're that old. Isn't that strange? It is really strange. I don't know how I do it. Don't um, ask me. It's um, my beauty Unlike secrets. my best mate, Ron, who mm. looks and sounds miserable all the time. <laughs> oh, bless him. Bless him. You just carry on with that workout, honey. <laughs> <laughs> go and buy in your candles in Wimbledon, darling. Anyway, so, and we'll so just... what do you reckon? Are we not as relevant <laughs> as we get older? Surely you remember yourself as a young, voluptuous young woman. And that phone, I bet that phone didn't stop ringing, did it, Anne? Well, actually, although I was very gorgeous back in the day, um, I was a very shy thing. So we didn't have the internet, no social media. We had the landline. We only got that in our house when I was like 15. Yes. So we just weren't as confident. And no, no, I was a shy little thing. But just going back to the question, the sandwich generation, I call us a lot in our late 40s, early 50s. What does that mean, the sandwich generation? Well, we're in between the the young ones and the older generations. Maybe some people have still got their parents around around or their carers and I look after my mum as you know um but yeah we've got young friends we've got older friends we're in the middle so you're only irrelevant I think if you don't keep up with the times and as long as you keep adapting then you're pretty relevant which is why a lot of us do have younger friends because we can keep up with them we try don't you um don't you think I don't think I do try anymore I've, I've kind of given up Oh my God! Oh no! Please, we're not we're not going to be ordering a coffin soon for you. No, I didn't so, say I was no. dead, did I? I didn't say I was no, going about to die. You're quite dead. But I just, I just you know, I don't really want to go out at night uh, uh, to 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 a bar or anything like that. I'm quite happy to talk to a few people, you know, on the phone like yourself. Sure. Um, in this little, you know, I quite enjoyed this. Um, certainly, uh, very different to what I was. Have you died? Uh, I thought you had, love. <laughs> mm. I'm, I'm taking it all in. We've gone deep. We've gone deep. No, but Chris, listen, look, you do your, you do your video blogging or vlogging, as they call it. Um, you've got your, your iPhone. You, you, you really do use technology brilliantly. There's no one can say you're not keeping up with everything. You're on Skype. You're doing a radio show all over the world. It's brilliant. Oh, I man- do- managed to do something else on the Skype tonight. I'm very pleased with myself. I have connected my Skype to my Facebook. Now, I'm not sure... I'm not sure exactly what that means, but I have done it. So perhaps someone could tell me exactly what that means now that I've connected my Skype to my Facebook. Because I then I then looked at my Facebook page, but I can't see anything different. Well, should I see something else? Or maybe you can see something else that I can't see. Well, How does that work? I can't comment on that because I haven't got a clue. I'm sure one of your techie friends or your nephew, lovely Jimmy, may call in and let you know. Um, it's like Twitter. and Oh, he'll be asleep now. He's got work tomorrow. Oh, bless him. He's coming down next week. Oh, He's coming down next days. week and Uncle Chris is taking him to Arids for his birthday. Chris, how many nieces and nephews do you have? I've got uh, two nephews, Jimmy 18, Gary, who will be 30 this year, I think. Uh, there's Tracy. I think she's 26. So that that's those two. But now two of those have children. So Gary has a uh, daughter, Evie, and a son, Harry, and another girl on the way. And my niece has a son, George, and a daughter, Emily. Oh, so, wow, that's quite a busy family, isn't it? Yes, yes. And have you got to buy lots of Easter eggs at Easter for them oh, all? Oh, they all got an egg. Yes, they all got an egg. <laughs> they all got an egg. Don't you worry about that, dear. I think you should be raffling an egg off on your your show, Chris, for all your listeners. I think we need a raffle or something coming up. A raffle? Up, so. Yeah. Well, you know, like you program, gave your phone case away. We can't be giving away gifts, dear. <laughs> what do you think? This is some sort of charity thing. <laughs> so listen did you my, my viewing for the week were well the number one there was a mafia program on i don't know if you managed to see that from last week and the new one of this week no number two and talking about age there was a brilliant program on tonight and it really is worth watching on the reruns because um it touched upon the nightlife in tenerife and brighton of all places but oh, it was right, called yes. it was all about old age pensioners who are in their 70s having an absolute blast and it was absolutely Absolutely brilliant to watch. They Seven. were mixing with drag queens and having fun on holiday. Seventy and is the next forty. 
Well, that's the other thing. That's the other thing, Anne. You say that yeah. about holiday. Now, I was watching this programme called Ibiza Weekender. Yeah. And I see them, you know, right, let's all have a drink. And they were like, let's go party. And, and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so glad I'm not there. <laughs> that's it. That, honestly, I am. But you're oh. not. You would want to be there, wouldn't you? You would want to go out with them and be, do this party. I wouldn't want to do that. I don't know if I'd want to part. I did go to Ibiza when I was about 24, 25. Yes. And it was before it really did explode, the whole big clubbing scene. I mean, you know, it was good. But, I mean, yeah, you do outgrow stuff and you get a bit more. A glass of wine is nice. You couldn't be getting slaughtered and all that all oh, that no. booze. But I you mean, know I'm... what was interesting today? And um, you did mention it because I said about the James O'Brien show, which just started this week. It's a really, really good discussion show. That. I've is got it to say better than that rubbish loose women? Oh, yeah. This is a little bit more um, brain food, I would say. But James O'Brien is really good, and it's lovely to see him go from LBC onto TV because he's got a face for TV, not a radio. What, James so we're O'Brien? Loving James O'Brien. Well, he's got a face for TV. Yeah, definitely got a face for TV. He looks good, Un- doesn't he? Unlike you, Chris. Unlike you, Chris. <laughs> Have you got that the right way round, dear? <laughs> I'm only joking, Chris. We love you. We really do. <laughs> Bless you. We want you on telly. We will not be offended if your face is on our TV screens. Will I'm we? on it now, <laughs> aren't I? I'm on it now. I know. I know. <laughs> but going back to... Um, yeah, boozing and that. It was a really good discussion. And I am passionate about chat shows. I know I'm a bit gobby and chatty, but I'm actually quite shy. <laughs> it's an understatement, wolf isn't it, really? Flower. I'm sh- quite a shy wallflower beneath the surface, Chris. Yeah. So in my sad, lonely Lewisham life, I'm calling into your radio station at night having a blast. But, yeah, anyway, going back to... Um... There's, there's a couple of messages here. Mark okay. wants to say he saw the documentary on Channel 5 uh, it was so good to find out that old people can still party just like yeah. us young ones. Now, a, a good yeah. example of this is the karaoke dice. There are a couple of people um, that come regularly. One guy is a guy called Ta- uh, Claude. He's very tall, wears glasses, walking stick, has to sit down when he sings. He is over 80 years old now. Wow. That's and there's amazing. another guy called Dave P, who Mark will know, actually. He's, I think he's over 65. He's another regular at the karaoke. So, yes. And why shouldn't they? Why shouldn't they? I mean, let's be honest. You know, I'm 52. But I'm not far off it myself. But you don't actually look 52. Oh, I do. Chris. If, you, if you look close up, which you never will do, and to be honest, because quite frankly, I'm offended by your breath. <laughs> um, but if you look closely, you will see the wrinkles and the lines and all that. Oh. But yeah, like Marge was saying, she keeps she keeps thinking I've lost weight. No, it's it's sinking downwards. My face has got thinner, but my waist has got wider. How is this happening? <laughs> well, I don't think you'll be the only one. I, I know, Chris. What can we do well, about I did, it? I didn't wasn't going to mention it, to be honest, Anne, but <laughs> now that you have... I'll stop it. <laughs> but listen, you know these um, these old, old age pensioners in Tenerife and Brighton? Oh, my God. They were stripping. They were really having fun. And do you know what? They were like back to teenagers again. So stripping. I, I don't mind getting old. I don't mind getting old. Because I know I'm going to have such a good time. Did you say they were stripping? They were getting their, their bits and pieces no. out. And, oh, my oh. God. A little bit, a little oh, bit. I'm just they, imagining my sister doing that. Oh, oh God. I think, oh, I think yeah. one woman was 78 years of age and she was doing nude modelling. And, <laughs> and, and, you know, it was lovely to watch it because they were, you, just, you didn't even notice the nudity. There was something beautiful about people just embracing themselves and just they're it's just flesh at the Please end of the don't day start and coming into my karaoke nights and taking your bloody clothes <laughs> off dear for christ's sake oh i love it nude karaoke what's, what's happened to those other two that you bought in that week uh mike and um danny is it oh mike and danny yeah well they, they know no doubt um, um gallivanting around the place are they and, coming yeah. back on a monday night pardon are they coming back on a Monday night? I don't know, carry-on? darling. I don't know their calendars and their social diaries. Oh, I really don't know. I thought you were running the world the way you talk sometimes. Oh, well, it's got to fit in with me, honey. It's oh. got to fit in with me. Two so. messages. Um, <laughs> uh, Terry says, some strange food I've eaten this week. 
coffee that has been defecated by an Asian monkey. Oh, no, you mustn't drink that, Terry. The, all these little monkeys are kept in tiny little cages. I read about, this was on the telly. It's not nice the way those monkeys are treated. Please stop drinking that. Imagine that, drinking coffee that had been defecated by an Asian monkey. What's that called? Do you know, Anne? Oh, my God. You must God. think you've heard of that, have oh. you? Pardon? You have you heard of it? I have not actually. I'll have to. I'll try and look it up. Oh, and he also dear. says, as James C. G. Dean said, "I am not relevant. I'm not relevant anymore." Oh, you are, you, Chris. Do you, you know are. James Dean? He runs this little community type station up in Manchester. Oh, and he's been. He's quite. He's important. There. Oh, he's so bloody in full, full of himself. He oh, really, I thought you oh, meant the actor very, very James important, Dean. Hey. I thought you meant the actor James Dean. No, there's loads of James Deans. It's a very, very common name, dear. Well, you've got to explain yourself better, Chris. Honestly, I thought here, you meant James is. Dean, the actor. It's Civet Coffee, C-I-V-E-T. <laughs> Have you not heard of that? No. Civet Coffee. From... I don't, I'm not a coffee person myself. Do you no, drink coffee? No, I don't drink coffee. Horrible stuff. I'm, t- I'm a tea. Well, you know, you, you had an... A sort of an Irish upbringing, didn't you? Are you a tea person? Yes, absolutely. And do you know what annoys me? A lot of these petrol garages now have got coffee machines, but no tea. Why is there no tea machine in the in the um, in the petrol stations? I just the only place the only ones that have, tend to have them are BP garages. And honestly, you know. The the boys that work in there, a lot of them are Asian chaps, and they they got they can't make they make you the tea right, and then more than one occasion I've had said to me, do you want hot or cold milk? And I'm like, what sort of question is that? Why would you put <laughs> hot milk in tea? Or do you want cold then? Well, yes. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? I think they make more profits from coffee, but. Do they? I'll tell you what's really bad is going to um, Quick Fit. If you've ever gone to Quick Fit to get tyres or some job done and then you go in their horrible waiting rooms and oh, there's a machine please. and you get hot do chocolate me a tea. Favor. Oh. I bet you don't even want tyres, do you? I bet you <laughs> hang around there, lift your skirt just a little bit, open that. Some of those lovely 25-year-old lads are going to notice you there. Oh, they oh, are yeah, lovely, aren't they, like, like Chris? Yeah. Haven't you, admit it yourself. I'm sure you look, you eye them up and down as you go in for your MOT. They don't. Uh, MOT? MOT, yeah. Uh, I beg your pardon. MOT? I don't have a car that old. How dare you? <laughs> what, you M-O-T? don't have MOT? I've never had a vehicle that's more than two and a half years old. Really, Chris? God, oh, no. MOT? Pardon? Oh, you're getting paid too much by somebody. God's sake. You're getting paid too much. <laughs> Can you give us some financial advice over the airwaves, Chris? For yeah, some of us, save people? it, don't spend it. Mm. There you go. Anything else you want to know? <laughs> um, so, what's, what what have you saved money on? Have you been to Waitrose this week? I have. Yes, I've been. I went uh, Monday. Any bargains? Um, yeah, they got some of those washing tabs. Are <laughs> six pound <laughs> instead of eight pounds? Uh, the cocoa dairy free milk that's two for two pounds at the moment. Usually they're about one pound thirty odd. Uh, special offers in the cheese section. Uh, the ice cream you get two lots of those for five pounds instead of three pound fifty each. Oh yes, yeah. Chris, you can see why your diet isn't working. Can you? <laughs> why is that then? Uh, messages, messages. Skype to Facebook means that you can see your Facebook contacts on Skype. Oh, can I? <laughs> I don't know how it works, Terry. Uh, Terry does say the coffee is really nice that you drink. I don't like the sound of drinking anything that's been through another animal first. Uh, Mark says, definitely, please, no nude karaoke. So we're not, <laughs> we're not doing that, and nude karaoke. I think it would take off, though, in London. It really, really oh, would. I don't know. And Matt says, are you still able to purchase... Twining's English breakfast tea at your local supermarket. As of the last two weeks, I've been able to find it anywhere. Am I going mad without my daily dose of it? Um, yes, we are indeed. We, we, I can buy a box of 240 Twining's English breakfast tea bags. And actually, Matt, uh, you probably didn't know this, but that is my favourite tea. Twining's English breakfast tea. Property. Thank you. <laughs> Do you like Assam, Chris? Have you ever had Assam tea? Is that the black one? It is quite black. It's quite lovely, I think. And Earl Grey, I do like a bit of no, Earl Grey. 
Don't like Earl Grey. Can't stand it. Horrible stuff. No, no it's like drinking a bottle of perfume. <laughs> Well, I, I think it's, it is quite perfumed, is the word. No, I don't uh, like it at all. I like the Starbucks tea. Quite like the Starbucks tea. Mm. So, uh, listen, Chris, another thing I wanted to let you know about is Graham Norton's on Friday night doing a big Eurovision thing. All, yes, that's all already... The, um, all the big bands that were winners in the past, that's, that's going to be on TV. That's already been recorded, isn't it? Yeah, I believe it was recorded last night, I yes, think, in, yes. in um, yeah, I Hammersmith, yeah. I believe. BBC One, Good Friday, I think it's on. I think it is, yeah. That'll be really good. So I, I, I have already set my recording equipment to tape that for me. And they've actually said that all the trains are going to be really bad over Easter. It's quite bad, actually. It's the worst I've seen ever on the news well, about all the um, trains. They're doing so many train um, train works. Anyone, any of your listeners, and you drive around, don't you, at the weekend? Worst day of the year to travel. Yeah, it's going to be really bad on the road. Sorry to bring you some doom and gloom, Chris. Oh, you're <laughs> full of it, dear. Full of doom and gloom all the time. Brandon wants to know: uh, Can he have one of the twenty-five lads from QuickFit any day? Could do with a good service. I didn't uh, know you had a car, Brandon. <laughs> have you got a car? What is the cost of tea like in the UK? Is it quite expensive? Well, it depends what brand you buy, Matt, to be honest. Um, the Twinings is, I suppose, you could spend eight quid, eight pounds, uh, about $15 on a box of 240 Twinings English breakfast tea bags. So it, it depends on your brand. Or you get the economy tea bags. The trouble with the economy ones, you know, you've got about put four tea bags in the cup to notice that it actually tastes of anything, didn't you, Anne? <laughs> Awful. Well, lovely to talk to you on the phone today, darling. Fabulous. You too, Chris. Enjoy and, the rest uh, of your evening. Say that again? Enjoy the rest of your evening. Yeah, I'll enjoy the last 25 minutes of your show before I go to bed. Good. And I will wish you a fantastic Easter. It might help you go to sleep listening to me. You never know. <laughs> All right, Chris. Cheerio, Anne. Take care. Bye. There we are. Lovely Anne, who's uh, speaking from Lewisham. A line is now free. If anyone else wants to call in, here's your chance to do it, boys and girls. Uh, you've got the information down there just uh, on your live screen, those of you who are watching or listening to the show live. If you're watching or listening to a recording, you can still join in by sending in an email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, now, what else have I got here? Got an email here from uh, young James. Hello, James. Uh, James Bates, who says, Hi, Chris. I like your shows on Wednesday night, and it was nice to hear some of uh, the people that called in. He's talking about last week, of course. Uh, is Ronnie going to be doing a show, Your Best Mate? Well, he's, you see, the trouble is with Ronnie, he says he's going to do something, and it doesn't happen. So I wouldn't hold your breath, to be honest, James. Don't hold your breath, mate. Has anyone heard from Fagash Lil? No, I haven't. Um, I did notice that it was her birthday, Yesterday, I think it was, and I sent her a birthday message, but no, no reply. So, um, we uh, Lil often disappears, she disappears for a while, fat actually, doesn't she? Then she comes back again. Uh, nice to hear Wayne again, haven't heard him in a very long time. That was last week, of course. Uh, he was talking about Craigslist, was it happened here in the UK too? I've seen on the news some people do cash purchases via eBay and uh, got hurt. Well. We just heard uh, Terry, you know, he did a a cash sale and uh, ended up losing all the money because someone complained and uh, they took his side. I suppose it must be quite difficult, really. You know, if you're like if you if you was eBay and um, like one person complains, but the other person says, well, no, I didn't do anything wrong. So how do you know which side to take? That must be difficult for them, wouldn't it? Um, James says, I would be dealing with cash if it's a large sum of money. Well, on eBay, well, I think if you're buying something, to be honest, I think if, you, if you're buying something expensive, like from eBay or something large, then I think you need a face-to-face -face meeting. You know, none of this send it through the postlark. I think you need to 
to take the item in your hands and hand over the money like that, really. Otherwise, you know, you, you wouldn't, surely you wouldn't send, I don't know, 500 quid in a post and... and then hope that the item arrived, would you? Would you do that? I don't think I would. I, bu I buy a lot of stuff off Amazon, one click ordering, and the other place I buy stuff is from uh, John Lewis. Now, as you can hear, my voice is breaking down. I, d <laughs> I don't know if we're going to be able to manage another 25 minutes, but we'll try, we'll do some. Uh, Sean, Sean Riches, hello, Sean, says, eBay, awful experience recently. Purchased 60 white spandex chair covers. Were any of you wearing that stuff? I could see Anne wearing spandex, actually. Do you, <laughs> do you wear Anne's uh, spandex, Anne? Uh, chair covers for weddings and events that are how out alongside my mobile discos. They are not as described. Instead of arched fronts, they are flat-fronted. Luckily, the wedding client didn't notice um, so he didn't uh, have a problem with them. So that that's bad news, isn't it, really? You know, you, you call something. And um, he tried to send them back, but but they didn't accept them back because he'd already used them once, which I think is a bit unfair, isn't it, eh? Um, you may have seen my... Short video this morning, where I caught quite a few of you out. I said I've got a job on BBC Radio 2, and indeed I haven't. And a couple of people here. Uh, Mark says, um, Chris, you fooled us this morning. <laughs> I know, Mark. <laughs> Wendy says, I'm so disappointed. You should have kept that April Fool's to yourself until tomorrow. I was loving it until you told us that. <laughs> Terry says, you should have left it in about your job and see if anyone fell for it. Most amusing. Well, I did. Lots of people fell for that. It's the first time I've played an April Fool's job, to be honest. I don't usually do anything like that. Mark says, um, you bad boy, you, we were looking forward to you on Radio 2. Brandon says, I think you're more suited to LBC. Lighten that station up. It's a bit too serious now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I agree, Brandon. It's got very serious, LBC. There's a new bloke on at night. Now, what's his name? Um, I can't remember what his name is. I think it's one o'clock he starts. You've got the wonderful Ian Collins now. Thank God they've replaced that Duncan Bartz. Oh, he was a right alpha male, he was. I didn't like him. But they've got Ian Collins on now uh, between 10 and 1, so he's quite good. And another bloke on there now, 1 till 4 before Steve Allen comes on. I can't remember his name. He's got a slight Scottish accent. Really nice radio voice. Try him out when I finish at one o'clock on the LBC, OK? Brandon says, I didn't fall for your April Fool's joke because, for one, you wouldn't stop doing these shows. Two, you wouldn't work from one till 6am. Three, it's very hard to get a job with the BBC. And finally, you said it without enough excitement. But a man can dream. I would. I would work from one till six. I would do... An overnight show from one till six. I think I'd have to get used to it. I'd certainly need water. I'm desperate for some water now. I've, I should have left Anne on the phone, actually. Anne or Marge. Because they can actually talk without me interacting with them. Did you notice that? Both of them. <laughs> Anne and Marge can keep talking. And then I could have popped next door, got some water, come back in, and they still would have been carrying on. And no one would have noticed any difference, would they? <laughs> Oh, dear. Um, and indeed, uh, Anne said this morning, I believed you at the beginning and thought, oh, my God, that's fantastic news. But then I started to think I'm not 100% sure. Oh, well, we shall have to have the Chris Reardon show now until you do get signed up. Oh, then never sign me up, Anne. I wish I could be more optimistic like some of you are, you know, saying things about me... Uh, uh, getting shows on the radio. Now, I really do need to go and get a little drink here. Can I play you a little bit of, uh, just like, um, can I play you half a minute of music while I go and get a drink of water? Just a second, I must go and get a drink of water. Stay there a second. <laughs> back now. 
now. Sorry about that. I've had to go to the... Uh, I'm upstairs, so I've got the... <laughs> this is this is not the cold water water. This is the water from the tank, which you're not supposed to drink, are you, really? You're supposed to uh, brush your teeth out, and that's it. Um, Anne also sent in an email. And uh, said a couple of days ago, uh, you got me really thinking about how fast the year has gone. A quarter of the year gone already. I posted about it myself, but I forgot I had watched half of your video then. The phone rang and I got rudely torn away from your award winning, internationally acclaimed radio show. It's not internationally acclaimed. It really isn't. <laughs> Oh, my God, you saw Cinderella. Yeah, I went to see Cinderella on Monday afternoon. Great film. Please, please go and see Cinderella at the cinema. OK. Um, she says, uh, uh, seems no one likes ordinary smiling anymore. Oh, what? you? Yeah. When people are doing selfies, they keep pushing their lips forward. Have you noticed that? Without pouting. Do you do that, Mike Martins, in Canada? I definitely do not do that. I do not know what's up with these young people, but they need to stop doing that. It's a very strange thing. Yes, as, very as strange. As you probably heard of my, uh, the show on Monday, I did this uh, 50th birthday party at the weekend. And there was a group of girls there. And just for three hours, all they were doing were tapping away on their mobile phones and taking selfies for three hours. What kind of life is that? Well, I don't How know. Annoying. On the other hand, is it any worse than me sitting here and doing this? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess all it is is just a matter of keeping yourself entertained, really, isn't it? Yeah, it, I think it is. <laughs> yeah, honestly. I wanted to touch uh, quickly, Chris, on uh, April Fool's. Just want to let you know our, uh, our local government here today, uh, they pulled one on the people. They put in the paper, right, that what they were going to do is initiate... Um, these devices on all new vehicles and implement them as well on old ones in where you'd be placing this GPS unit on that would send tracking data to a central traffic server. And if you would go six kilometers an hour above the posted speed limit, you would automatically be ticketed. And it would, say you speed seven over and say three days later in the post, there is a bill for $150. Yeah, that's, that's, that, that's the sort of thing that would happen here. I'll tell you that now. <laughs> Honestly, what a liberty. Have you got many of those speed cameras, Matt? Yeah, honestly, they must be about every, I'd say, 10 to 12 intersections. Now you, you can't go anywhere without speeding, really. Right, yeah, it's the same here. It's the same here. At the moment, on the way home, uh, there seems to be an awful lot of roadworks going on. There are various routes I can take to get back from here, from London. Right. But a lot of them, they've all got roadworks on them. And it's just, it's, it's, it's taking an extra 20 minutes now. And at three o'clock in the morning, that's not funny because you're tired. Exactly. You, you just want to get home and have a rest and just not worry about yeah. all that. Yeah, it's just awful. Just <laughs> awful. It really is. And what about in the UK, Chris? Do they have, you know, where you've got the roadworks, right? Do they ever have like a little camera operator sitting at the roadworks and giving you any kind of a fine if you're going too fast through that zone? They, th no, they, there's no, they, they have automatic cameras. They have, now what are they called? Average speed cameras. Have you got those? Average speed cameras? No, uh, go ahead and tell me what that is. I've right. never heard of it. So. Uh, uh, there, there's a camera at one end of the road. Right. And then a given distance, I don't know, you know, a mile. Yeah. Okay. So there's a camera at, after a mile. And then, so the camera at the front takes a picture and the okay. one at the back takes a picture okay. and then it average your speed out. So oh. you can't, sp you know, like, you, you know, you like, you, you speed, you slow down when you get to a camera. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And yeah. you go past it and you speed up again. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, you can't do that because, well, because these it can two... tell that you've gone too fast yes. through that zone. So that's the simplest one, you know, two cameras. But right. there are stretches on the motorway now, and I know the M1's one, where these cameras go on for miles, you know, one after the other, and they constantly measure your average speed. So you can't speed up before and after these cameras. Wow, and then in that case, if you do speed, then it works the same way. You'd get a, a ticket in the post, I guess. Eh? Of course, yes. There's no, oh. no, no bloke to pull you over 
you know, and say, excuse me, sir, uh, you're going too fast, get a little bit of a telling. Oh, no, 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 it's all automatic. Uh, some computer prints, prints off a fine, and I doubt that anyone ever even sees it. Yeah, likely not. You just end up paying, and that's it then, Yeah, eh? that's the end of it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Lots of well, How cars. annoying is that? The UK is the most, uh, has the most, uh, not just speed cameras, uh, observation cameras, security cameras, I believe, in the world now. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Mm. We're, 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 we're in Big Brother territory, aren't we? Yeah, definitely. Mm. Um, so I wanted to elaborate on the, the poutine that I brought up earlier. Yes, what is a poutine? Oh, you poutine. Okay, yeah. Poutine, yes. You've got to try this. It's this French thing that they do because uh, about half the people in Canada, they, they speak French, right? They all come from a very French background, and that's apparently a French word. And yeah, it's basically just you have like, let's say, for example, you were going out to, to you know, like a dine-in restaurant, and you get this this load of chips, right? Yeah. Well, basically what they do is they you have a bunch of these cheese curds, and usually it's like a, a mozzarella cheese in these little curds about, say, you know, uh, one inch in diameter. And they load up all these cheese curds right inside the, the chips, and then they pour a load of, of uh, the brown gravy on top of that. You let it sit there for about five minutes, and obviously all the cheese curds get melted up. Oh, lovely. It's nice because I quite like mozzarella cheese. I like the. It's kind of rubbery, isn't it? It's very yeah, a little bit. And as I say, when you put this hot brown gravy on there, right, it gets nice and stringy, and you kind of mix it up in the chips, and you just you just kind of take a fork and eat it all. Oh, oh, just Matt, this, this sounds very very bad for you. <laughs> oh, absolutely. You can only have about one or two maximum per year. <laughs> I wouldn't sleep after some of that. I'm having trouble sleeping at the moment, Matt. I don't know why. And I notice, um, for example, last night I got to bed about, was about half past two. Well, I woke up at six. I couldn't get back to sleep again. But but I have noticed I'm very, very hot when I wake up in bed. Interesting. Could Could that be me trying to fight something off? Well, it's very possible because, I mean, they usually do say, right, that your body does heat up, you know, quite a lot in order to fight off any kind of disease, really. So that's very possible. That could be what's going on. The same thing happened again, like I had a little sleep uh, this afternoon. Right. Because obviously I got up so early, I thought, well, I'll, I've got to try and catch you. So I went back to bed about up past three, but I woke up again at 6 p.m. Wow. So just very little sleep, eh? And it, yes. And again, very, very hot in the yes. bed. In the bed. Oh. So not quite sure what's going on there i don't feel ill interesting well i mean i guess you, all, all you can do to, to kind of balance that is i guess obviously make the room a little bit cooler i don't know if you have any access to any kind of air con or get a window happening there but i can just open the window yeah yeah yeah, yeah, just get a bit of a breeze. Maybe that'll help you out. I know for myself personally, I've always had to sleep with the room a little bit cooler, if you know what I mean. And yes, I'd rather yes. just be under a blanket if I need to be. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think what, I might what just... about Chris? When you when you actually go to sleep though, when you, when you decide to sleep, do you fall asleep right away, or are you up for a while before you can actually um, shut down? I I did until about a week ago. I don't know what's what something something seems to have gone wrong, perhaps with my clock or something like that. Yeah, I, that's very. I, I doubt very I mean, much. We've had an hour go forward, but I doubt very much it's anything to do with that. Yeah, I shouldn't um, think so. Mm. Has there been anything going on? Like, are you, you find yourself worried a lot or stressed yes, out? Yes, there is, yeah, there is something, actually. Uh, yeah. One of the places I work in recently had a, I say recently, last year, had a new sound system put in. Right. And it's an absolute nightmare. Oh. When I go and work on it, the microphone constantly cuts out. Oh, as in Jay does the music. Right. And, like, people have tried many, many things, but they don't seem to be able to sort it out, and it looks like we're stuck with it. Wow. Um, and it's not a particularly easy night to get to, but once once I'm there and we've started, I have a lovely time. The customers are lovely. The staff are lovely. The management is lovely. It's just right. this blasted sound system... That just it, it it just doesn't work when we do what we do there on this particular night, right? And yeah. actually, that must have what stopped me sleeping last night because I woke up and this problem was in my head as soon as I woke up again. 
Well, we'll see that right there. That could be the trigger because they do usually say, right, that the the mind has a lot of power as far as that goes. And And technical issues like that, obviously, that's something that's under your control. Yes. So, I mean, you you, obviously you come up with this idea that you want to remedy the situation, but obviously you're left powerless here. And I I mean, how annoying is that? Well, I was asked about the sound system and I told them not to put it in. The next week it was in. Um, It's not a massive payer, this job. You know, we're not talking about loads of money or anything like that. Right. But then, uh, you know, I've said so many times before, man, Matt, I I never came into doing what I'm doing to make a load of money. No, exactly. Just you enjoy it. Yeah, it was never like that. To me, the money is the smiles on the faces as they leave. Absolutely, yeah. Okay? Of course, we all have to get paid for what we do. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to live, right? Right. Uh, But it was never about the money. Um, now, this particular job is actually the lowest payer of the week, okay? okay. Yeah. Um, but that's not really anything to do with it. You know, I took the job. I'm happy with what they pay me, so that's it. So so the money yeah. is nothing to do with it. It's just right. this particular blooming problem. And it. Well, I'm at the point now where I, I sent a text this tonight, and the text actually said... Um, can you tell me, is it, have we done everything we can possibly do now to try and get this going? Is this how it's going to be from now? Right. Please let me know. I need to know. Thanks. Yeah. And I am expecting the text to come back and say, yes, this is how it is. At which point the ball's in my court. And I think, I think I'm going to leave it. Yeah, well, I mean, I would definitely just... recommend that, that you go ahead with that, Chris, because really, you, know, you need the peace of mind as well, right? And I mean, if things aren't going to work out, and they've done all they can do, um, there's not much you can do, and you're going to end up just continuing on this road where you're constantly stressed about that. I mean, that's not healthy. And it is stressful. Now, the yeah. journey there isn't good. But if the journey isn't good, but it's and, and the night works okay, because when I do something, Matt, I want it to run smoothly. Absolutely. If you yeah. employ me to do something, I will go to the ends of this earth to try and make it run as smoothly as possible. Now, yes. let me tell you, um, again, with this particular job, when I've been away on holiday, they've got someone else in. Da, 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 da. Now, yeah. next week, I have to have a night off from this. OK. OK. Um, uh, be, because I'm doing something else. Right. Uh, so I said that. I said, shall I get... Oh, no, no, no. Don't get anyone else in. And I'm like, oh, well, do you not want to keep it going? Well, yeah. The trouble is, when you're not here, we get a lot of complaints. So oh, really? we don't want anyone else to do it. Just have the night off and we won't do it next week. And okay. I came away from that and thinking, wow. You know, wow. Yeah, of. absolutely. Um, so, I, 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 you know, and I'm the sort of person that if you give me a job... I will not leave. Right. The bloke down the road can offer me twice as much, three times, four times as much money. But the point is, you gave me a job. I will stick with you unless I'm really, really, really fed up with something. Exactly. And I mean, you have to also think about yourself in that way and realize, you know, am I really happy here or, you know, is this just something that's going to weigh me down, really? Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. th- this this problem is why I'm into- Can you just imagine? I want you to just imagine this walking around with a microphone and it. Oh, uh, uh, get it. Exactly. Now, yeah. If I, if I was doing my show like that, would you still be there now watching? Absolutely not. My no. my years of viewership would go out the window at that moment. <laughs> and it was the same, if you remember, a couple of years ago. We were having major problems with the computer. So that's it. I came out of it for a week. And then yes. I got this new computer and it, it was thoroughly checked out. I think you were someone, you was the one who checked it out with me, weren't you? Yes, that's right. Exactly. Yes. Until I got it working. And then we come back. We That's don't right. try and yeah. muddle through it. We want it to work. And then when there's people coming into a venue, in my mind, who are expecting a certain quality of whatever's happening on that night, I yeah. want to be able to deliver that. Otherwise, Absolutely. I feel a complete and utter dickhead. Well, and that's the thing. And really, the venue needs to to look at that as well and, and realize that if something doesn't happen, eventually there is going to be a negative effect there and their clients are going to go out the window as well. And, you know, they might not be holding on to their DJ either there. So it's, it's a terrible thing. Uh, well, I'll, I'll see what the um, 
the reply comes back on that one, but I, I, I think I know what the reply is going to be. So, yeah. And even even my mate Ronnie says, "Are you not happy there at the moment?" I said, "I'm happy with everything except this particular problem." He right. said, "Then th then go." He said, yeah. "You don't need the money." I said, right. "Well, you know, it's neither near or near that." Yeah. But no, I, no, I don't really. You know, I don't know what to do. I Ugh. don't know. I think you're right, actually. I think, yeah, I think, yeah, must must kind of go, really. I mean, because oh. to be honest with you, as you know, I, I also was a DJ for quite a few years, and uh, I also was in a very similar situation where I was at a venue. Um, the establishment was already quite older. They didn't have the, the system I needed, and apparently I found out in the long run they weren't expecting to stay open terribly long, so obviously they didn't invest in it. And I had the same kind of thing where it started off really well. The clientele was great, but the, the system was just not there. And at that point, you know, a couple of my friends told me it was a selfish act on my part, which I felt it wasn't because people were were unhappy and it really wasn't doing anything for my reputation or the uh, the establishment so end of the day if they're not going to work with you um you just got to kind of do what's right for yourself at that point and uh it's a very sad thing but i mean you got to do what you got to do really yeah i think you're right matt yeah well it's lovely talking to you oh just before you go uh terry says i re he reckons i should get a fan to call me down good god terry he's gone why would i want to plug in something electric dear and make <laughs> my electricity bill go even more when i can just open a window yeah, and especially if you're having the winds you were telling me you're having, obviously that wind will take care of you, no problem. Matt, on that subject, isn't there something really nice about having the window open and listening to those really strong winds outside? Absolutely. How peaceful is that? I love it. Matt, I'd, yes. love, to, I'd, love, to, I'd love to meet you sometime over there in Canada. Absolutely. And yeah. if I, on my next trip to the UK, I'll be sure to let you know ahead of time. We'll meet up uh, maybe for a couple of chips and... Uh, I'll have a good chat, mate. That would be lovely. Good luck right, to you, Matt. Take care. Cheerio, Matt in Cheerio. Canada. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. He's a lovely chap. He's been with us for years as well. Um, yes, uh, Terry H reckons um, uh, uh, the heat is keeping me awake. I think the heat is waking me up as well. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have that window open a little bit tonight, Terry. I will. British Gas gets more money. Not from me, mate. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm first utility, as you well know. First utility. Thank you very much. Uh, Anne says, I'm still listening, but it's lagging behind. I'm not quite sure what that is, lagging behind. Oh, I know what's happened, Dan. You're, you, did you pause the show? <laughs> I know what's happened to Anne. She's, she's paused. So you're, you'll hear this in about half an hour. Anne can't hear this now. I think what's happened, if you pause the show, then it picks up from where you paused it from, which means I'm kind of no longer live. So you, you, you're still getting all the rest of the show. Because she's just written here, I've never worn spandex in my life. Well, we were talking about that half an hour ago. <laughs> That's what's happened. You, you, you obviously paused the show. So when you get to this bit, Anne, we've actually finished. Because I'm just about to finish. <laughs> I've finished half an hour ago. <laughs> Brandon, I'm not reading that out. <laughs> Anyway, that's it today. Uh, once again, an absolute pleasure doing these nighttime shows. Now, not next week. Uh, next week, let me have a look. I've got my new Barry Manilow calendar. Next week, I'm supposed to be doing a quiz night at the King's Head in Islington. That's on Wednesday night. Now, I'll double check that because they haven't come back to me yet. So if it's not on, then I'll be here. If not, uh, or, or if it is on, I won't be here. I don't think I'll be here next uh, Wednesday at 11 o'clock. I'm sure that show's going to be happening. OK, boys and girls? Uh, just to let you know. Uh, Mark says, I find it hard to sleep, but I've got some new pillows. Uh, is that what's hopping? Uh, see, I can't have the pillows too high. You know, some people have about five pillows. My, um, I've, Sometimes I push the pillow around and I've just got me, me head there. Uh, Good night, Terry. Terry's on his way to bed. I must get to bed soon. I've got a do a little bit more work on this, though, now. Thank you very much for watching and listening, boys and girls. We've got another live show on Saturday afternoon at 12 o'clock UK time. That's 12 o'clock in the afternoon, midday UK time, uh, a live show on Saturday. Find it the same way as you found this by going to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk and clicking the uh, union flag at the top there. Can you do me a favour? Some of the little links that I post, uh, certainly for the shows and that, could you repost them on your wall? 
that would be quite nice. You know, we need need to get the message around a little bit. There we are. All done then. Thank you very much, boys and girls. Uh, what's my next public gig? Friday. I'm DJing tomorrow. I, that, that's not really suitable. Uh, the next karaoke is Friday at a place called Central Station in King's Cross, London, if you want to join us there from nine o'clock. All right, boys and girls, thank you so much for listening, watching, and all your calls. It's been wonderful. See you soon. Bye-bye now.